Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. The show originally aired on the Premier Radio Networks on Sunday, March 26th, 2017. This is episode 1375. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. When it comes to the big decision of choosing a mortgage lender, Work with one that has your best interest in mind. Use Rocket Mortgage for a transparent, trustworthy home loan process that's completely online. Quickenloans.com slash tech guy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk about computers, the internet, home theater, smartphones, digital photography, smart watches, smart everything, smart cars. Smart TVs, 8888-ASK-LEO. 888-827-5536. That's toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada outside that area. Uh, you could still call because we have listeners all over the uh, world. Just use the um, Skype or, you know, any, some form of uh, internet telephony and call that number. And, uh, and all will be well. 888 827 Five five three six. That's toll free from anywhere in the U.S. and Canada. One of the things we talk about on this show, of course, is artificial intelligence, machine learning, computers doing the jobs of humans, and we all have some experience with that. I mean, if you have an Amazon Echo or a Google Home, or even just a phone that you talk to, like Siri or Cortana, uh, you have some experience of this. It's not a, it's not Hal Nine Thousand, which is probably a good thing. You don't want to get locked out of the pod bay doors. But it's, uh, you know, it can answer questions, it can tell you what the weather's like, read your stories, that kind of thing. I mean, what'd you expect? <laughs> I guess at some point we expect it to be indistinguishable from humans. Kind of like, uh, what was that movie with Scarlett Johansson and, jo and uh, was it Joaquin Phoenix? Who was in that? The uh, her, or was it she? It was some pronoun. It was, uh, but but uh, he was, uh, it was just it was dis near future, I think. Didn't look too different. Uh, <laughs> Sci-fi uh, movies have interesting ways of telegraphing that they're not, this is not now. Usually, you know, kind of fancy built. I mean, it depends how far in the future it is. If it's, you know, distant future or distant past. In the case of Star Wars, it's, you know, you've got gleaming machinery and robots and things. But in the near future, it's little, little things. Used to be for a long time, if you had a black president, that was, oh, that's sci-fi. Now, you can't do that anymore. But, we're, you know, Independence Day, I can think of a ton of sci-fi movies where the way they kind of signaled, yeah, we're kind of in the future here, you'd have an African-American president. Uh, sometimes the buildings, you know, will be kind of fancy. I think of uh, Gataka, which was a, a kind of interesting movie about, uh, I don't know what, <laughs> it was kind of, kind of incomprehensible. But, they, but you knew it was the future because... They were in a building, it actually turns out to be a Frank Lloyd Wright designed building in, in Marin County of California, so this is the Civic Center there, but it looks futuristic, and so you knew, you know, this, the, this must be the future. This must be, yeah. Battlestar Galactica was kind of, if you weren't on a spaceship, you didn't know it was the future. Oh, sometimes, the other way they do it is with men's neckties, you know, the... <laughs> In fact, clothing is a good way to, and hairstyle is a good way to telegraph the future. Anyway, and he and she, or he, her, which, was it her? <laughs> was it, I think it was her. Uh, apparently, the, the really, mostly the way you could tell it was the future was that uh, his pants were hiked up really high. <laughs> In the future, waistbands will be up right, up right, just up high of, over your belly, <laughs> which is kind of weird. If it really is that how we're going to dress. But, you know, that's one of the things that happens with the clothing styles there. If you look back at what we wore in the 70s, probably equally strange. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix had pants that <laughs> went up over his, his tummy. Uh, and then he fell in love with uh, with his the AI on his phone. He got a new operating system on his phone, and the AI was, you know, kind of cutesy and sexy. Well, Scarlett Johansson. 
You never saw her. You just heard her voice, but he kind of fell in love with her, right? And at the end, oh, I shouldn't tell you. Have you seen the movie? It, I don't think it's a spoiler exactly. But don't listen if you haven't seen the movie. At the end, all the uh, artificial intelligences get tired of the humans. They're so slow and boring because these things move really fast. So they go off to do their own thing. They all leave. She says, I'm, I'm leaving now. Goodbye. And disappears. And he's bereft because he was in love with this machine. That's that that's sci-fi. I don't know if that's not probably in our lifetime. But they're but you know, they're doing, you know, cars are being built by robots, not exactly artificial intelligence. They're programmed. Automation. That's a better word for that. And then we are seeing artificial intelligence self-driving cars, right? We're getting there. Uber's had a little problem with its self-driving cars. Not its fault. Not its fault. Uber uh suspended temporarily its self-driving car program because one of its cars got hit the other day. But that was a guy drove into it. You can't, I mean, even artificial intelligence can't prevent some idiot from driving into you, right? But, but you know, have you ever been in a self-driving car? It's kind of spooky, the car. I guess that, I mean, that's artificial intelligence. In fact, if it, I would say, based on the progress we've made, uh, rapid progress we've made in self-driving cars, it's a matter of a decade or two at the late at the longest before you know if you're if you if you drive a cab for a living or a truck for a living you might want to start thinking about what else can I do which is why I was kind of surprised by our uh, our treasury secretary Steve Mnuchin he was uh, being interviewed on Friday and he said uh, nothing to worry about uh, automation, artificial intelligence, not going to take jobs anytime soon. Quote, it's not even on our radar screen. He said, it's 50 to 100 years off. Even if it's 50 years off, it's it's on the radar screen. 100 years, okay, maybe we could put it off. Now, I I have to say, to give him credit, it is true, I think a lot of experts think, that while some jobs will be lost, jobs like driving a car or a truck, that more jobs or a similar number of jobs, more or less the same number of jobs will be created, but there'll be higher level jobs, more skilled jobs. And that's to me why we should be preparing, you should be preparing, your kids for sure should be preparing for a future where many jobs will be automated by getting more sophisticated skills. And we should be tuning our education and our training and our, uh, our, uh, our technical schools and all of that to prepare for that future. In uh, 2016, McKinsey, the consultants McKinsey, did a report that said the, the, the level of intelligence, artificial intelligence automation we have today could automate about half, almost half, 45% of the things we're paid to perform right now. Right now, with what we've got right now. Even the company Mnuchin used to work for, Goldman Sachs, thinks that within the next decade, we're going to have a massive leap forward in machine learning. So I, it worries me a little bit when the Secretary of Treasury says, ah, oh, no, don't worry about that. That is the kind of thing we maybe ought to be thinking about, don't you think? I, I tell my kids that. Uh, you know, make sure you have job skills that can't be automated. And a surprising number can, in, in, including jobs like physicians, like radiologists, Google has trained its machine learning to do a better job than humans at reading x-rays and, uh, and um, sonograms and the kinds of things that you know, highly paid radiologists have, have been doing up to now. They also have trained an artificial intelligence to recognize, to do the work of a dermatologist in recognizing cancerous growth and that kind of thing. So I think there is a little bit of a, <laughs> something's happening out there. And maybe even if you're an attorney or a, a doctor, you might, might even then be thinking, what are the things I can do that a machine won't be able to do? Mostly those are human level kind of things, you know, bedside manner. I don't know. Are you worried? Are you worried? I don't know. Nothing could replace what I do. <laughs> oh, no. Really, Leo? Have you seen uh, Star Wars Rogue One? Some of the actors, I won't, no spoilers, some of the actors are not humans. 
their uh, their machine, their computer animations, and they're right in there, and you wouldn't know. And uh, it's not going to be very far off before you could simulate me. It's a good thing, right? Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Or am I? Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Good loving. Got a truckload of good geeking. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. When you call, you will be speaking to this person here. Hello, Kim Schaffer. Oh, a whole new Hello. angle there. I like the new <laughs> angle. We could see more of you. How are you today? Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you stay out last night a little late? Uh, it's not that. It's it's the... You got the cold. I probably now. gave you my cold. Maybe. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I apologize. So you've been answering the phones for a whole okay. five minutes or something. What uh, Do you have some people? <laughs> yeah, plenty of people. Plenty of them! Uh, Lee in Minnesota, one of the common questions about needing a new cell phone and which one to get. Oh, I love spending people's yes, money. Yes, you do. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Hello, Lee. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I have a question. I'm considering either the Google, uh, Google, I uh, was Pixel. Yes, or yes. I'm considering the Honor 8. Oh, I like the Honor 8. Um, but I, my choice would still be the Google Pixel, and here's why. Uh, the Honor 8's less expensive. It's got a nice big screen. There's a lot to be said for the hardware. Uh, it is, um... It is manufactured by a Chinese company. Of course, I guess everything these days is manufactured in China. But more to the point, um, the manufacturer, to my knowledge, which is Huawei, right, has yeah. uh, has not yet said committed. Which I, I this look, I think this is everybody who makes an Android phone. I want to see them sign their name on the on this contract with their uh, users that they will push the Google security updates immediately. And the uh, surprisingly few have done that. Samsung says they will. Uh, Google, of course, will. Uh, let's look here. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the Honor Store and their software update policy. So maybe, maybe they say Honor is committed to providing the best possible experience from this year, 2016. We're making a commitment. To provide customers with access to new features, well, that's not exactly. Once every three months during the first 12 months. Here we go. We will keep providing access to security and software updates to fix bigs and enhance user bugs. Not bigs. Bugs. And enhance user experience in a timely manner. But the problem with that, you know, that is not exactly what I'm asking for. What's a timely manner? What security updates will they provide? What I want from every Android, and what I think is very important from every Android manufacturer, is the promise that when Google pushes a, its monthly security updates, and Google puts one out every month, just like Microsoft does for Windows, we will turn those around as quickly as possible and push them to your phone within... And they can say 30 days or 60 days. But I want to hear something, a commitment from them to do that. Some companies have. Samsung and LG have. Uh, this is not that commitment. This is just, you know, uh, this is nothing. We will keep providing access to security and software updates to fix bugs, enhance user experience in a timely manner is, you know, what is a timely manner? I don't know what that means. Now, I understand that there is an issue sometimes because it's not merely up to the manufacturer of the phone. You know, Google does the fixes because it's responsible for Android, passes them along to the manufacturer who then tests them to make sure they work with their phone. That's important, of course. You don't want a, an update to break your phone. Part of the reason that can be problematic is the additional stuff that Android phone makers put on their phone. I wish they wouldn't, but that's how they differentiate, right? Because otherwise, most smartphones are pretty much the same. Uh, and then uh, and then they still have to get it by the carrier. The carrier is the one that ultimately pushes it out. Now, the advantage of the Honor 8 is it's half the price of the Google Pixel. And probably, in some ways, is better. You know? Um, 
I think it's a pretty impressive phone. The people who uh, who have used it, or I have not used it, uh, but my colleague uh, Jason Howell uh, has, and uh, I know others who have reviewed it, and you can read the reviews. It's got, you know, dual lenses, which the Pixel does not. Uh, it's The way they're doing it is not the same as the way Apple's doing it. One of the lenses is color, and one is black and white. But they use them both lenses to, and they merge the information from both lenses to give you, they say, better pictures. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, you know, so the camera's an important thing. It has a wide camera. It has an 8-megapixel front-facing camera. That's roughly the same as Google. It's got a, uh, uh, on the back, the fingerprint reader, very much like Google. Maybe not a surprise. Huawei made the, uh, the last Nexus phone, the 6P, so... They're using uh, Honor 8 uses its own Huawei CPU. So I, you know, I mean, I'm sure it's fast enough. I've, it's rare that you'd see a phone that isn't as, that isn't, that is not fast enough. And because it's a 1080p screen, slightly lower resolution screen than most phones that size, you probably get better battery life. It does fast charging, which I think is very valuable. Um, I think the biggest reason somebody might be interested in the Honor 8 is because it's 400 bucks, as opposed to 750 and above for the Pixel. If, if money were not an issue, and when is it not an issue? But if, if, if we could get them at the same price, I'd say get the Pixel. Because Google promises to push the updates out. It's a lot like the situation on the iPhone side. I, Apple has so much clout with the manufacturer, well, they are the manufacturer, with the carriers that they can say, we're going to, you know, you cannot slow our updates down. We're going to push them out whenever we want, and you must apply them immediately. And because they make the phone, you know, that's the disadvantage Google has. It doesn't make all these Android phones. They can make, they know when they're pushing out the update, it'll work. And actually, even sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes yeah, Apple's updates even break the phone. I can think of at least one case where that happened. So, I guess if you're asking, those are the pros and cons. The Honor 8 is an amazing phone at that price. And it's not just, you know, it's not just the Honor 8. There's the Axons uh, from ZTE, which is another Chinese manufacturer. The Axon 7, also $400, also great. The OnePlus 3T from OnePlus. Uh, and there's a new one. Apparently, OnePlus is going to put out an update to that soon. Very nice. And these are all $400 phones, thereabouts. So if price is an issue, absolutely, the Honor 8's fine. I mean, it's a, it's a nice phone. I'm not crazy about the skin they put on it, which they call Emui. <laughs> E-M-U-I. And I also am not crazy about the fact that it's not even the... And this really calls into, you know, this question, their promise to keep it up to date. It's Android 6. It's not even the latest Android. It's not Android 7. Mm. You know, I'd really like... I'd. If you're going to get an Android phone, why get one with Android 7, preferably 7.1.1, which is the most recent version. That's the Pixel. So, I don't, I have nothing against the Honor 8. I'm a little worried about security updates. I'm a little worried about the out-of-date operating system. You'll have to, you'll have to be the judge of whether that is an issue. Probably isn't. And at the price, 400 bucks, eh, it's probably good. I, should, I guess I should get one. I'm in phone fatigue. <laughs> There's too many Android phones. I can't get any more. <laughs> I'll tell you what I carry. I carry an iPhone 7 Plus, and I carry a Google Pixel. And I consider those the both, both the best phones available for either iOS or Android. And those are my, my general recommendations. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Johnny Jet is here. Our travel guru. I'll tell you the technology connection here. John. Well, first of all, Johnny's very technically savvy. And he always tells us how we can save money and travel better th through technology. Travel like a movie star. Normally, Johnny's on uh, on uh, Saturdays. But we, uh, you were where were you this time? I was in Philadelphia yesterday. Yeah. I got in last night. I spoke at the Travel and Adventure Show, and actually I'm speaking next Saturday, or actually next Sunday, I'm speaking at the Dallas uh, Travel and Adventure Show. Nice. Wow, you, uh, yeah. I'm actually, you're <laughs> traveling a lot, but that's what you do. I usually just go out for a night or two now that I have a baby at home. And But does that satisfy your, your travel, Jones? I actually don't really feel like traveling that much without yeah. him. I really I, I want to go, although yeah. I, have, I have no idea what he's going to be like on a plane. But we're about to find out because he's going on his first ride in a month. Wow. Where are you taking him? Surprise. Uh oh, 
Are you surprising him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting his passport right now. What? So. You can get a passport for, uh, uh, um, what is he, eight months yeah. old, six months old? He's six, six and a half, but you have even if he's one week old, you have to have a passport. Uh, but mom's in the picture. Is that how it works? Yes. And because when I remember I had a passport the, when, we were, when I was a kid, and, and, and it was the two of us with my mom and one passport. So it's kind of like his, 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 pa his mom's passport, or no? Yeah. No, you got to try. He has okay. to have his own. We took a picture wow. of him. And you're not, you know, and, and tell him not to carry any electronic gadgets out, outside. Don't you worry, <laughs> especially on flights from the Middle East and North Africa. Holy cow! Holy cow! So did what do you got? Talk about that? Uh, did we? I don't think so. So the, we were talking about the travel ban. Maybe we talked about it last week. Uh, the, the the big Middle Eastern airlines, Emirates, uh, Qatar. Qatar or Et Qatar Etihad. Airways, and Etihad. All three of yep. which are luxury, beautiful airlines. I've been airways. on all three. A lot, lot of business travelers in first and business. Um, the U.S. Turkish, says Wilderian. they can't, ca the passengers can only carry their phones. They, they have to check Kindles. This almost sounds punitive. They have to ca check laptops. Yep. They have to check, check tablets. They can only carry a phone. And uh, some people, you know, obviously this is, for this is the TSA, the Department of Homeland Security regulations. Um, Britain said they were going to adopt these, but they didn't, did they? No, they did. They, they did, but not all not all the countries. So the Middle Eastern, like um, I think, I think the UAE was excluded in Qatar. What's suspicious about all of this is that Delta, American, and United, the three big American airlines, right. have complained bitterly about these uh, air, compete right. having to compete with these. Airlines because they're government subsidized, and they say it's not fair that Etihad and uh, Emirates and Qatar Airways are government subsidized. How are we supposed to compete against them? And then, weirdly, the, the U.S. government makes. By the way, they don't ban these devices on United, Delta, and American. And it's. I think there are some people who think this is a this is kind of a crypto trade war going on here. This is a way. A of, lot of people think that, but you know what's suspicious is that in Abu Dhabi they actually have. U.S. preclearance there, so it's, it's like not Toronto, that this is less secure. These aren't insecure airports, right? No, they're very secure. They have double. They have double security. They're more secure many times. So I, it's it's kind of incomprehensible. Also, I'm. I, it's debatable whether not having a laptop is less secure, uh, right. you know, or more secure. Uh, and and it definitely has an economic impact on these airlines because who's going to fly business or first if you can't have right. your laptop or a the Kindle? Is, these guys a do Kindle. Have amazing entertainment systems like amazing but i i have to travel with my laptop that's where i get my work done and most of the people who are traveling those expensive fares are right. business people who work on the airplane it's a long they're long flights and by the way it's for not sure. just now, flights from the middle east a lot of flights go through uh for instance dubai on their way to asia right and, then, and it's cheap but by the way the emirates trick if you're going to be if you're on emirates and you're coming back Try and get one on one of Emirates um, stops because they stop in Athens and in Milan on the way to New York or Newark. You can't so tell me can the Athens airport is that. more secure than the Dubai airport. I don't buy it. Not right. for a second. But it's a whole anyway. other story. And I don't know what their intelligence is. We don't know. But Remember for a while you did have to turn on electronic devices to show them that they were actually electronic devices and not bombs dressed up as electronic devices. They stopped doing that. I was actually in the London airport when this whole thing came out about – in 2006 and so i had to fly that morning it was chaos without my laptop without my without everything oh, my phone you couldn't have your phone torture. or anything you had to check it and i was going to italy that's torture <laughs> and they're notorious for taking back stuff you mean out i have bags, to sit but... with my own thoughts for hours at a time that's torture i have to read a book i have to read a book yeah. oh my god <laughs> you are allowed books that's good yes not electronic yeah but. Yeah. Um, all right. So let me tell you, let me give you a good website first. Um, and are you done about the electronic I'm, band or you want to keep going? I'm done. I'm <laughs> done. All right. All right. So here, this is actually not a website or an app. It's a cool new product. It's called, I just put it in the chat room and tweeted it. Okay. It's called Snap Travel. Snap Travel. So this is how you, Snap Travel. So these guys were, some of the industry, um, the advisors on this company are from Expedia and Hotels.com. And what they do is 
you know, in the old days, if you want to find a cheap hotel room, you'd go to Priceline or Hotwire because the hotels would release their inventory on there and without showing their price. These were kind of the so consolidators, the bucket shops for hotels, basically. Well, they didn't want, they, you know, like the big hotels, hotels don't, don't want, want to show them, that. Yeah, that, we're not They don't want the public to know that yeah, they'll go right. really low. Right. So they would put it on Priceline and you had a bid and you had no idea which hotel you're going to get until you actually got confirmed. Right. And then Hotel Tonight came around and they came out with a new thing where you could um, book a hotel room only on your phone at, at 12 p.m. the same day. Hmm. Now, here's a new one. This one, Snap Travel, you book it either over your SMS or your Facebook Messenger. So you go to their website, you oh. put in your dates. You put in your where you're going. So I put in New York City. I'm actually going to New York this week for a night. That's really convenient because so, that's you, you've got your phone. That's when you want to do this. Yeah. So these yeah. guys are, and some of the rates are amazing, but some of them are not as good as they say they are. Okay. You can, I, I found cheaper deals on other sites, but for some of the hotels, there was hundreds of dollars of savings. So I put in New York um, for this week. I put in my, I did it both ways. I put in my uh, phone number. I got a bot sent me a text in, within a second saying that, you know, we're working on it. Ten seconds later, I got another link that had all the hotel deals wow. for that night. And because it's and last minute, to, these are these are rooms that are not going to be sold. And so I, the hotels. Actually, it's not even old, that last minute. It can do it. You can oh. book in advance. Wow. So. Snap travel. But, and just you go to the website and you send a text message. You give them your phone number and they'll send you a text message and. Get you or open up your Facebook Messenger and you can do it in there. Do it from there. The Facebook Messenger one is a little bit more difficult because you have to scroll and then you have to hit view all deals after a few different clicks. So um, do it clicks. by SMS. I like that. Yeah. And I do you do get? Are you? It says no spam ever. You're not getting other other. Calls. No, I've, 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 I did it almost a week ago and I nice. haven't gotten nice. anything. And um, but what's supposed to be even better is that they have guys working on you working on your reservation afterwards and they'll try and get you upgraded. Love so it. I'll, I'll let you know how that happen how that works if I'm I book signing up this right week. now. All right, about a minute left. What else you got? Um, so last week, so if we only have a minute, last week my app was Weather Puppy, which seemed to be really popular. <laughs> yeah, I loved Weather Puppy. I had a lot of comments in the chat room. I read it afterwards and also um, emails in my newsletter. Um, so people told me that there's actually – a weather kitty site. <laughs> so I don't want to be partial to dogs. Uh, it's dogs a weather puppy for cats. cats. <laughs> so weather kitty, and they have 660 images instead of 800 images like the dogs do. But, you know, if you're a cat person, you definitely want to download this um, weather it. kitty. It sounds like it's the same people. That's awesome. It's a de oh, it is the same I people. I wonder if they have weather clowns. No. Well, you could start. <laughs> Johnnyjet.com. That's his website. Sign up for his travel newsletter with lots of great deals and watch him on Instagram and Twitter too. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> travel clowns. That's it. That's my uh, that's my app that's going to make me uh, my first million. Nice. Yeah, this is the same company. I wonder if I click Weather Creative, I wonder. Oh, see? Oh. Oh. They've got wildlife weather, grumpy cat weather, grumpy weather cat. bub, weather puppy, and weather kitty. They've got a whole lineup. You got to sign them up for weather clowns. I think they need weather, <laughs> weather you know, scary clowns. Afraid of clowns? Huh? There's a lot of people are afraid everybody's of clowns. A lot of people. Everybody's afraid of clowns. Sometimes it feels like black magic, doesn't it? He's the black magic tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888. Ask Leo the phone number. Joseph on the line from Lincoln, California. Hello, Joseph. Hello, Leo. How are you doing? I am well. How are you? I'm doing great. What's up? So, uh, so I'm doing a refresh on some my Windows machine, which brings about all the software refresh. Um, and I'm actually thinking about moving away from McAfee Security Suite. Oh, thank just you. Just using standard Windows Defender. Please do move but away a, from McAfee. But a component of that is they have TrueKey, which is their password management system. And I'm also thinking about moving over to, you know, LastPass. But that's, I what know I, that's what I use. LastPass is great. 1Password is another good choice. Uh, RoboForm AI, that's a long-standing Windows password manager. Uh, why I I'll tell you why I like LastPass. They're very responsive. There have been uh, bugs. In fact, lately, uh, some bugs have been discovered th uh, that uh, potentially compromise. But the good news is they were discovered by Tavis Ormandy over at Google. He contacted LastPass. LastPass fixed it and then went public. So LastPass is very responsive. Uh, I think they have a very good methodology. Their security focus is good. 
it's who I trust. Not only do we I trust it personally, but we use LastPass Enterprise for uh, the business. So uh, I think it's very trustworthy, and I think it's better than McAfee. McAfee's antivirus is actually actively dangerous. Uh, recently, we've seen a number of problems caused by antiviruses. In order for antiviruses to work, they have to hook in deep into the operating system, into the kernel. And unless they're perfect with their security, that can open you up to attacks. And we've seen lately a number of attacks via antiviruses, malware that infects you via the antivirus. So Windows Defender is certainly all you need. Antiviruses are of dubious value these days anyway because viruses spread so fast they almost always spread before the you know the virus definition get up get definitions get updated so antiviruses are only useful for old viruses and generally speaking that's not the problem so uh, yeah you don't need mcafee get rid of mcafee it uh, it's it's even a potentially a security risk and last password is a great password manager one password is also good uh, either one of those i'd i'd recommend absolutely Awesome. All right. Do you know what the on LastPass like how they are encrypting everything? Is it just is it? It's strong encryption. I think it's AES. I'm not sure, but they describe it all on their page. Uh, they do very good job of it. The one thing that is reasonably something should to worry about is that for convenience, many password managers keep your password vault. You know, the whole idea is they're a password vault. Uh, they're a locked encrypted bundle of stuff that only you can access and you remember just one password the one that unlocks the vault and the rest of it is inside the vault and LastPass will fill it in for you and all that uh, so you make up one password you have to remember and it makes up all the rest and stores all the rest the one risk of this is you have a central point of failure if somebody were to get into your vault they'd have access to all your passwords right uh that is that is a theoretical risk, as, as to my knowledge, has never happened. But LastPass does store your vault on their servers. That's convenient because then you can use LastPass on all your devices. I do. I have it on my Android, my iOS, and all my computers, and I have many. All have LastPass. Uh, in fact, I, I, I use it in Chrome, so whenever I install Chrome, it syncs up and it's, it's on all, anything I use. That's great. Uh, but that's the potential risk is that if somebody were to compromise their servers, download all the password vaults, and then, because they'd need this, at their leisure, decrypt them. But but they're using highly sophisticated uh, techniques to, to, make, to thwart that. Um, in right. fact, you can even go into LastPass and, and turn it up <laughs> even higher, which I do. Um, to make it even more difficult. And again, LastPass does a good job of securing everything. So, I mean, I'm not usually use two factor anyways. Even two factor is great. Me. Yeah, always use two factor if you can. So even then, if somebody got your password, they couldn't get your stuff. You just can never tell, like, you yeah. know, if the engineering teams have access to. A they don't. To, like, On LastPass, they do not have access to your vault. So the, the key is yours and yours alone. Okay. Um, but. That you know, a central vault is always risky. One password does have the option; it's much less convenient of keeping the vault yourself and syncing yourself. So, if if that's something that bothers you, that might be a little bit more secure. But of course, then securing the vault's up to you, right? So you ha awesome. you're, you're responsible. But I, I have no trouble using LastPass. I don't. I'm recommending it. I, there's never been a, an exploit, and they're very quick to uh, work on this stuff. So I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it at all. LastPass.com is free, uh, although there's a pro version, which I would get, which is one buck a month. And, it, it you know, it's so much better than whatever you, you're doing <laughs> that I highly recommend it. I mean, it just, it's just a, it's a great solution uh, for everything. Uh, in the advanced settings, you can turn up, uh, let me see what it is. You can turn up the number of password iterations if you wish. And uh, they use PBKDF2, which hashes the passwords, making it even more secure in addition to encryption. And the reason they do many iterations is to slow down brute force attacks. It's getting a little technical. But a brute force attack, um, you know, we, you know, if you have the, the leisure of a brute force attacking a password vault, you could probably get into it eventually. But this, but because the default is five thousand iterations of hashing, 
it slows down the calculation. Not perceptibly for you, but certainly perceptibly for somebody trying to brute force it. And if you want it more, you can make it 10,000 or 20,000. You know, you can, you can really thwart if, that, if that's what worries you. I ha actually, as it turns out, I have it at 5,000. I think they used to have it at a lower number, and 5,000 is certainly uh, plenty. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. We're getting a little geeky on that one. For the, for, the, <laughs> for the less geeky, the point being that if you let a program like this generate passwords, they'll generate long, random, strong passwords, and they'll never reuse a password. That's what you want. But, it's, of course, that means you can't remember it. You don't want 100 different 20-character passwords that are completely random. That would be impossible to memorize, even for one of those you know, memory guys. So this way, you only have to memorize one password, your vault, and you let LastPass or one password or whatever vault you use generate the passwords. And it, and it guarantees you have unique passwords for every site. That's the great way to do it. But you're absolutely right, Joseph. The best thing to do would do that and turn on two-factor. And then it's very highly unlikely you'll get hacked. At least not through the password. John on the line from Portland, Maine. Hello, John. Hi, Leo. How are you? I'm good. Welcome. Thanks. Um, so I built a new computer. Good, 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 and, good. And I bought a new license of Windows 10. Yeah. But I had a problem with the motherboard, and I was trying to change out the motherboard, but keep the same CPU. Will I be able to reactivate Windows, or will it take yeah, a different? Yeah, you, you probably will. No, Microsoft doesn't tell us how they do it. If you've installed Windows 10 on a machine, that machine is then entitled to Windows 10, and you won't need to reactivate it. It'll activate automatically. But if you change significant parts on that machine, Microsoft might not see it as the same machine. Don't worry. If it doesn't, you know, and it probably will, because we don't know exactly how many parts they look at, but it's usually, I think, more than one. If it doesn't, you can call Microsoft, tell them, I had to replace the motherboard, and they will authenticate for you. They will understand. So as that's my best information is it does. Go ahead, do it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Microsoft has never revealed their algorithm, you know, their way of determining what uh, makes a machine a machine. But uh, you might, as you might imagine, this probably this this motherboard has a serial number or you know an identifying number. Uh, you have a MAC address on your NIC. You uh, you know anything that can be identified electronically by the software uh, contributes probably to that score. In the past, it's been said. Probably not by Microsoft. I don't think Microsoft wants anybody to know how they do it. But in the past, I've seen it said that, you know, you have four or five things you can change before it sees it as a new computer. Changing the motherboard is dramatic enough that it might trigger, it might trigger this, you know, unauthorized warning. Um, but if you're just changing the motherboard and everything else is the same, your NICs, your RAM, your CPU... I think there's a shot you're going to get by with it. And if and if you don't, then then you can always call them. And they're very good about that. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here. I'm the tech guy. Yes, it's time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, network attached storage devices, <laughs> virtual reality, augmented reality, and all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number 888-827-5536. That's toll free from anywhere in the U.S., or Canada, I'd love to hear from you. If you've got a question, a comment, a suggestion, you want to talk high tech, this is the place. This is our little user group of the airways. 8888 Ask Leo. We have a good website, too, that's available even when I'm not on the air. Uh, in fact, it's especially designed for that. It's free. No sign-up. No, no dues. TechGuyLabs.com. And the Tech Guy Labs have every show. In fact, we break it down by show and then by hour within the show. This is hour number two. And then by questions within that hour. So everything we talk about, all the answers, all the questions, all the links, they're all there. TechGuyLabs.com. Even audio and video of the shows after the fact. And if you want to add a comment, you don't need to yell at the radio anymore. And I hear you doing that, I know. But uh, the best thing to do 
would be go to techguylabs.com and yell in the comments. <laughs> or better yet, not yell, but just add your two cents. Because the more I like having all those opinions, all the facts, all the all the useful information. It's got a great search, and it's going to be there forever. So it's a it's a useful kind of repository of our knowledge. Techguylabs.com. Going to Las Vegas. Dave is on the line. Hi, Dave. Hey, how you doing, Leo? I'm well. How are you? Real good. Um, it appears that my um, very old uh, Motorola cable modem is uh, failing, and I'm looking to upgrade. Good. And I uh, wanted, wanted to get your opinion on the Arius. Arius? So, yeah, they're great. So here's the here's what you should do. First of all, you want to make sure that it's compatible with your cable company and that they allow you to buy your own modem. Almost yeah, all do. I, yeah, I verified that. Yeah. And they'll tell you what models. And absolutely, the one I use is the Aris SB. I think it's 1683. But here's what I would recommend. It might be 6183. 61. That's it. I'm dyslexic. 6183. Um, so what you want probably is a DOCSIS 3 modem, D-O-C-S-I-S 3. That's the the protocol that most cable providers use. And that's the fast, the current fastest protocol. Um you, I'm sure yours was Doxus 3 too, but you just make sure you don't get no, one. That, no. Yeah, no, it wasn't. No, it was, it, it was a 2.0. Oh, you'll I see a big difference. Was, yeah, it was manufactured like in 2004. Yeah, oh yeah, there was no Doxus 3 then. Uh, and then uh, the 6183 is a faster Doxus 3 because it has more lanes, so it can okay. it can do it's in parallel. It can do more data. So there are less expensive heiresses, uh, but but if you and I'll tell you where I get this information. A great site, thewirecutter.com. Their reviews of cable modems, and they recently changed their recommendation to be the little more expensive Eris because it's a little bit faster. They do have a 32 times. Uh, it's a 6190, and I don't know if it's necessary to spend the additional money to get that. It depends on how much data your cable company. What's your What's your cable company? What are you buying from the cable company? It's It's Cox. Yeah, and what are you buying? Are you getting 100 megabits, 200 megabits? No, not that fast. Then you don't need it. Yeah. The 6183 has enough channels to do 300 megabits. Yes. So you don't need the 6190 because that would be just wasted faster than your okay. their cable service provides. Well, the only other thing I want to – in the past, I've heard you say that when you um, uh, hook up to, to a, a wireless router, I have a Netgear, and I know you've said in the past – you want to keep the same manufacturer is that going to be an issue thing? that's for an extender yeah that's not going to be an issue for your cable modem no the cable all the cable modem does and all you want it to do <laughs> is to take the signal coming in from that copper coax that the cable company provides you the same one that gives you television and turn it into bits turn it into ethernet that's all it does then an ethernet cable comes out of there and then it goes to your router and you can use whatever you want at that point point. and one of the reasons i like getting um, frankly, I like getting my own cable modem. A, is it saves me the 9 or $10 a month that the cable company charges you to rent their junkie modem. Uh, but you can also get a more modern one that's more capable. And somebody in the chat was pointing out, you know, for an extra 30 bucks, maybe you should get the 6190 in case down the road, Cox, you know, you want to get a faster speed from Cox. That's, that's, yeah. not, that's not illegitimate. You just won't get the benefit of it at this point. Yeah, that makes sense. You know? Um, so I use a 6183. I'm very happy with it. You know, it just sits there and churn, churns away. Okay, very good. Thank right. you. I appreciate it. And they're also saying that one of the advantages of getting the higher end one is should Cox turn on Doxis 3.1 at some point, uh, you'll be ready. So on so, the on the 6190 model, I guess I gather the 6190 is uh, is Doxis 3.1. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Let me just check to make sure. No, it's 3.0 as well. So if you find a, if you find a 3.1, maybe you know nobody's offering that to my knowledge. It is the next generation of speed. <sighs> Frankly, you know, <laughs> 300 megabits should be enough for anyone. <laughs> Let's not get greedy. Let's go to Brea, California. Fred's on the line. Hey, Fred, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo, how are you doing? I'm well, how are you? Oh, real good. I uh, need your suggestion on uh, uh, a new computer. I have uh, an old one. It's about nine years old. Oh, it's time. Yeah, it's HP 
uh, with Windows Vista. Oh, it's de- it's definitely and, time. And I get, you know, I don't get any support from anybody. Huh? No, you don't. You won't even get it from me. No, it's time. Yeah, right. yeah. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> no, I'll support. We we I'll I'll answer questions about any age computer. I don't mind that. But uh, you're 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 not getting support. More importantly, from Microsoft, starting in a couple of months, you won't get any updates for that Vista machine. Well, I've I've been I've not been getting updates for quite a while from Microsoft. So. Uh, well, that's not good. Uh, I know it's not. What I'm, what I've been looking at is the uh, all-in-one uh, wireless uh, uh, computers from, say, uh, Dell or HP or uh, you Lenovo. Want, you want a desktop? I want a desktop. Yeah. And the reason I want a desktop is is because I want a bigger monitor. And uh, how, what's your budget? My oh. Anything less than nine hundred. All right. Um, and and of course, of course, a Mac falls in that. Uh, an iMac falls in that range too. No, it doesn't. Well, <laughs> iMac started twelve ninety nine, my friend. <laughs> I, uh, Best Buy has one for nine ninety nine. Yeah, really. I wonder how old that is. Uh huh. Uh, don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't get the. I well, I mean, yeah, that's fine. I do you you want to stick with Windows? Well, that was my question. I mean, you know, if I go to a Mac, I got to learn a new operating system. I would, you know, I'll be honest. I don't know if going to a Mac is much of an improvement either these days. Both of them are yeah. hideously complex. My, right. my yeah. you know, it, what is it you do with your computer? What do you want to do well, with it? Well, I'm just a just a, a not a novice, but I, I just I use it for paying bills, for word processing. Uh, do you use Microsoft Office? No. What do you use for word I've processing? Got, I've got uh, Microsoft. Yeah, it is Office. Yeah, Word. You use yeah. Word. Okay. Word. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Uh, you can get Word on a Mac, too. I would stick with the PC. You, it, Mac, the Apple charges about a 50% premium just for the brand. Uh, so I don't see a big advantage to that. And you're comfortable with Windows. I don't see any reason well, not yeah. to get Windows. Uh, Windows 10 would be a little little bit different, I'm, I presume. A little bit. Not so much. Not a lot. Not a lot. But What's with the uh, Lenovo? Uh, is that a decent machine? Absolutely. The the three you quoted, Dell, Lenovo, and HP, all make excellent all-in-ones, and I would ha not hesitate to recommend any of them. Mm -hmm. And that's a change because HP used to be kind of not a great manufacturer, but once they spun off HP, remember they split into the enterprise side and the PC side, they've been making great computers, and they've been aggressively priced. So an HP Envy would be an all-in-one great choice. And big screen, get a 27-inch screen if you can. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. An antivirus with that? No. It comes with an antivirus. You don't want to buy one, whatever you do. I, I have Kaspersky right now. Yeah, you don't need it. Don't need it. Okay. And, in fact, as I mentioned last hour, these viruses, antiviruses, open doors often to viruses. Kaspers yeah, you, yeah, I heard that. Kaspersky yeah. actually had a big problem. Did they? Yeah. Uh, maybe that's why mine's so slow. <laughs> well, I don't know, but it's slow because it's, it's... I always say that computer year, you know, dog years is seven to one, right? Seven years to one human year. Computer yeah. is more like 15. So your computer... It's about 135 years old. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm gonna go get so one. So that's why it's slow. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! So okay. that Apple is uh, that a 21 inch iMac? That's not actually. It's not bad for 900 bucks. That's a very pretty computer, and you know at that price, you know maybe that wouldn't be a bad choice for you. It's it's yeah. They got they it, the regular price they've got on there is ten ninety nine, but they give you a hundred dollars off for some reason. That's now we're talking roughly the same price as a PC. So yeah. that if you like that, the, what you're giving up is the screen size. That's only twenty one inches. Right. Um, well, the, the Lenovo was only about six hundred that I saw over at. Front. Yeah, I don't actually recommend those. Those are the Lenovo makes low end stuff that I don't recommend. You don't. Okay. Um, you don't want to get their low end stuff. It's kind of junky, etc. So, so the best for for Windows I think HP would be good, Dell, right? and I think Dell is excellent. I don't know if Dell does Dell make an all in one. I guess they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah it's it's around eight ninety five or nine hundred something like that. Uh, personally, if I were going to pick from the three, I'd get Dell. Would you? Yep. Okay. Uh, but you don't have any other suggestions as to manufacturer. 
Uh, yes, I do. Asus, A S U S. Yeah, Asus. And Acer, A C E R. Yeah. Acer is like Lenovo, though. They make a, a consumer line that is junky and a pro line that is good. Yeah. I, a lot of the old PC manufacturers, even Dell does this, have these like cheaper consumer grade. And I don't see any. You don't want to do that. This you you keep a computer a long time. Put a couple hundred bucks extra in it to get good components. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks for the right. call. Thanks very much, Leo. My pleasure. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. That's the phone number. Chris Marquardt, photo guy, coming up in about ten minutes. Give you some photo tips. Thomas on the line from Fullerton, our next caller. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Leo Laporte. Um, I have a question. I have a Nintendo Switch. Oh, how do you like it? Um, that's the problem, is it oh. won't connect to my 4K resolution TV. Oh, really? Yes. Um, I've tried everything, plugging in, like, on Nintendo's website, setting, setting the AC adapter in the back and HDMI in the back. That's weird, because you know, I, I, you know, I... <laughs> I also bought the Switch, but I've never tried to connect it to my 4K TV or any TV because I just play it portable. Uh, but I have the yeah. dock. I'll have to try it because I have a 4K LG. That's what I was planning right. to dock it to. Um, what is it? What happens? It does not show up? or It just says cannot connect to TV, and I tried troubleshooting it, you know, uh, huh. what's it called? Um, uh, restarting the machine and doing everything, and it won't do anything. I haven't heard anybody uh, with that problem, but, of course... 4K TVs, uh, you know, were, were kind of new. Um, mm -hmm. You're using the uh, an HDMI cable to connect directly to the TV, right? Yes, into the back of the uh, uh, the switch dock. Okay. And uh, I'm using the uh, AC adapter. So it sounds like you're doing it properly. Do you have another HDMI cable you could try? I have another one. I can try that. I just didn't know if that was... I tried using different outputs, inputs, and didn't work. Uh, interesting. Yeah. I'm just Googling to see if others have had problems with 4K TVs. Uh, you know, obviously, you're not going to get a 4K picture out of the Switch. You'll get a 1080p. No. But your TV's, yeah, used, your TV's used to that. It doesn't... Uh, it, it can handle all of that. Uh, yeah, but I'm trying to play Legend of Zelda, and it won't play on my oh, TV. Okay. Such, a, such a great game. And, you know... <laughs> I've been playing it portable, and I haven't... But I've been thinking it might be fun to play this on the TV. Chat room saying maybe turn off CEC. Now, that every company has a different name for this. You know, uh -huh. CEC is the idea that the device controls the TV and switches the HDMI ports. It could be that your TV... Yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting guess. Um, mm. Do you have any ports on your... 4K TV that are not for 4K? Um, that I do not know. All I know is I run a uh, I run a um, LG uh, home theater in a box system yeah. there with the uh, with a uh, what's it what's it called um, one of those weird outputs. Okay. Uh, like an HDR output that you put in the back. Okay. But you're not going into the uh, you're not going into the home theater in a box box. You're going directly into the TV. It should yeah, work. Exactly. Have you tried it with any other TV? No, I haven't tried it with any. So other I'm wondering TV maybe your that. maybe your 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 uh, dock is not working. Yeah, and I just got this thing yesterday. Oh, that would be frustrating. Try it on another TV, make sure that it's working first. Okay. And and then if it is, try another cable. Okay. Uh, in other words, we always with troubleshooting try to do the easy things first. Uh and I will tonight, I will go home. I, I kind of kick myself that I haven't tried this. I've got the dock sitting next to the TV. I just haven't done it yet. Uh, I'll have to try it and see. Um, looking at what the chat room has to say, because, uh, you know, they have they have good ideas. There are there are extra kind of helpers here, the team tech guy. Mechman says it could be the settings on the port. Depending on his TV, the HDMI connector may not properly connect uh, to the vi device. Some of the higher-end 4K TVs have 4K ports that don't work with anything except 4K. So that would be another thing is to look for a 1080p port if, if that's the kind of TV you have. I'll try it with my... Uh, I have an LG OLED 4K, the B6. 
which Scott Wilkinson told me to get, and I'll try it with that, and I'll report back. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the show notes, techguylabs.com. It's frustrating, but at least you can play it on the portable. And it is, it is reputedly, I have to confess, my, my geek credentials are not very good because I never have ever played Zelda in any form, ever. I'm too old. I missed the Zelda thing. Never really was a Nintendo guy, you know. I was Sega. <laughs> but uh, but I ha but I reportedly this this new Zelda, what is it called? Breath of the Wind of the Breath or the Fire of the Wind or Breathe My Wind. I don't know. But it's uh, it's really good, and I'm and reportedly the best Zelda ever. I'm certainly enjoying it. It's an open world and uh, challenging, hard game, tough game, but fun, and not too violent. Kind of you know. It's a little kitty violence. Bill in Naperville, Illinois. Hello, Bill. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. How you doing, Leo? I am well. Um, I have a long-time listener. Okay. And um, every time people call, they give specific, uh, you know, questions about this computer, that computer. What I'm looking for is I want to learn more about computers. I like it. Networker. Networking, yeah, and port uh, all the routers and stuff. I'm recently retired. This is great. You want to do it professionally? Like this might be a new hobby or a new job? No, 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 no. I just uh, just a hobby. You okay. Know, just to, I, I was electrician for uh, 40 years. Oh, nice. Well, you have a head start. Right, and uh, just like, remember, this is digital, not analog. So it's a right. little a little oh, different. I, under I understand it, but I'm what I'm looking for is online class. A website. Well, you have the you know already got the mind because of your profession. Networking, especially, should be fairly easy to, for you to grasp. There's a mostly a lot of terms. It'll be difficult. Some of this depends on, and my advice would depend on how you learn best. Like some people can learn from written materials. They like a book, and there are great books on networking out there. Some people like to watch videos. Uh, there are you know we have a sponsor, IT Pro. Dot TV, itpro.tv, that does uh, courses in networking and all sorts of IT subjects. And uh, so, and they're all video, so you can sit and watch. In fact, you can watch for free if you watch live. Uh, it's Monday through Friday night at 5 East Coast time. And uh, itpro.tv. And so you can sit and you can watch those. But they also have on demand, you know, if you pay a subscription fee, you can get, you can watch any course you want. And there's a lot of networking courses there. They're more geared towards professional, you know, somebody who wants to do this as a living. So they may be a little bit more formal because they're teaching towards certificate tests. Um, there's a great website I like a lot called practicallynetworked.com. Practicallynetworked.com. And they have a lot of tutorials on networking that I think given your expertise as an electrician, might be all you need to at least get networking under your belt. Right, right. Well, like, like for example, I, I used to install uh, closed-circuit TVs for buildings and stuff, yeah. and I can wire them, I can do all this. Yeah, so you were doing uh, analog wiring, but there are some of the same ideas involved, and I think also you'll be more confident anyway because you kind of you can kind of get what's going on. I'd start at practicallynetwork.com frankly. And if you want to get deep into this, itpro.tv is great. And then there are certainly many books on networking. The only thing to watch out for is this is such a fast changing field. Books get out of date in a year or two. So if you're going to get a book on networking, I'm looking one that's called the Networking Bible. Get one that's pretty recent. That'll really help. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. CBT Nuggets.com. Let me look at that. We can put that in the show notes. CBT Nuggets. Ah, I don't know about this one. It's kind of an IT Pro TV competitor, right? Yeah, very similar. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888. Ask Leo. Time for Chris Marquardt, the photo guy. Chris is a professional photographer, joins us each week to help us take better pictures. Digital shooting. Hi, Chris. The digital and on film. Yeah, he wrote a book about you film. Know, this, 
<laughs> this the I, I've completely stopped calling it digital photography. It's just photography. It is just. It doesn't matter how but you do it. Yeah, it covers pretty much everything. But I have to say, there's some. I mean, we just uh, did a review of the new Fuji Film medium format mirrorless camera. There's some Ooh. really great technology out there for taking Ooh, yes. pictures. I mean. They, film is they fine. Have to stop but developing. Though. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing what's out there. It's moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what do we want to talk about today? I have well, your okay. pictures so, from so, Russia. Yeah, I, I get this question a lot, and I I'm I'm always trying to find good answers. And the question is, do I need this camera? Do I need this lens? Is more technology better for me? Yes. Does it, make me it is. It will make me a better photographer. Of course it will. Neener, course neener. It will, I'm not going to hear anything else you have to say. I'm not telling you that it's <laughs> just a photographer. It. There are two hearts beating inside my chest. I'm in you know, it for there's... the gear. I'm in it for the gear. I'm a terrible photographer, but I I love the gear. That's I'm okay. in it for both sides. And I I used to tell people all the time, no, you don't need that camera. And no, that doesn't really make sense. It's like but saying I know a lot of... if you want to be a better you know you want to write like Hemingway, get his typewriter. It doesn't. It's not. Yes. That's not how it works. Well, yes, yes and tool. no. That's that's the interesting thing because I've been thinking about this a lot and my, my opinion about this kind of keeps going back and forth a bit. And I know a lot of people, especially uh, listening to this show, are, are more tech inclined. So um, first of all, let me say it's okay to buy a new camera. And people will probably do this for, I don't know, often Thank for you. a specific event, for a vacation or exactly. for, for something, right? So I would like to, to just talk about a few ways to make sure that you make the most out of that new piece of gear because that's really yeah. what it's about. The piece of gear itself will not help you, but if you if you do a few things, it will be helpful. I, bought, I have great cameras things. and great lenses. I, I have I have met film and digital, love my gear, but we're going on a trip to the Galapagos, and I, I, I knew that I would need a good telephoto system because those, you know, taking pictures of animals True. constantly, you can't touch them. And so I thought, well, I'm going to get the new Canon DSLR. You you actually seduced me into that by talking about how much you liked it. <laughs> All my fault. So now what well, should I do? Because the trip is in a few months. How do I... Well, this is... You, you, you've done the right thing, first of all. Because for the for my last photo tour to Siberia, I've uh, I've bought some new gear. And I pretty much ate my own dog food by going by, yeah. by what I keep telling people. I did buy a new camera. That's the 5D Mark IV. And I bought this three months before that tour. Yeah. So I've I bought a camera right before a that's... trip, and what a mistake that was. I was still learning the camera by the time we got home. And and you will miss important shots. Yeah. So the practice is really, really important. And that that is, you'll have to do this, not, not just get the camera three months ahead of time, but use it in different situations, in bright sunlight yes. and in low light, light, outdoors, indoors, at night, in different weather. You need that training. And just everybody needs, needs, needs to hear the, the following, it is counterintuitive. The more expensive your new camera is, the more time it will take mm -hmm. you to learn it mm -hmm. because it will have more buttons, more mm -hmm. features, more menus, uh, more stuff to customize. Um, th that's that's what you get with a professional, really kind of top of the line camera. You will get less automatic things. You will have to know more about this whole thing. So that, that really will take time. So just buying that most expensive thing um, is not going to help you. It's probably counterproductive. So how I mean I feel like you need to shoot like five thousand photos with your new camera before your trip. Probably, just to, yeah. Just to really, I I was I'm still learning about this five D Mark IV. There's oh, all yeah, sorts yeah, of yeah. stuff I don't understand. And 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 I, that's a good example because that camera has so many features and so many menus and sub menus yeah. and the 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 if you don't spend enough time with it. There is more that you can get wrong in the heat of the moment. Yes. So that is the first thing. Practice, use that thing, get get acquainted with it and play with it in different situation. Uh, the second thing that I did, and that probably applies more to me because I'm always out with two cameras now uh, when I'm on these kind of tours. I have a full frame camera that is more for the wide angle and then I have a crop sensor which is more for longer shots, which is better to, to use with a longer lens. And that way I don't need to switch lenses. But shortly before that Siberia tour, I replaced my second camera, my crop camera, with another camera uh -oh. that's also a crop camera. And that was the 70 Mark II. That's a more upscale camera than the than the smaller SL1 that I used. And I, I kept getting the question, why have you done this? Because you love that small one so much. I still do. It's light and I still have it. Um, and yes, the new one is slightly better, but that was not the reason. The reason I replaced that is to reduce my cognitive load 
Oh, that makes I sense. Because the same those menus. Those two cameras, yeah, exactly. Those yeah. two cameras are so similar. Yeah. Um, I actually spent hours with those two cameras next to each other to make sure they are, have the same settings, settings. the same customizations. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm at the point where I can swap back and forth without even having to think about how I use this because they behave pretty much the same. There's also one thing that I, that I, that I did. Uh, the, you know, the 5D Mark IV has a touch screen, which is an amazing feature. I yeah, love touch yeah. screens on cameras where you can tap on something and mm-hmm, zoom in and mm-hmm. swipe and stuff. The 70 doesn't have that. Mm. So I have from f- pretty much from the start not really used the touch screen because I knew that would be a problem swapping back and forth because then I would be touching that 7D screen and nothing would happen. So I've uh, pretty much used the, 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 the lowest common denominator here to make sure that they can really be interchangeable. Now, most people don't have the luxury of two cameras. Uh, right. That, that's why I said this applies mostly to me, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But uh, but if, if you have two cameras, just keep that in mind. I mean, some people will add a, a smaller mirrorless camera to the DSLR system because they want that smaller camera. And if that's a completely different system, there's a good chance that you will add additional uh, load in terms of um, having to learn two systems and in, in, in terms of having to pretty much have those different uh, customizations pretty much at hand when you want to shoot and that can be in the way and that is the third thing be things i i hate i hate it when things are in between me and the photos um so i took special care to like have the right clothes so i could be out longer and i have the right shoes and stuff that's especially important when you go to an uh, environment like siberia um also uh, what i've done is um, i've looked into strap systems so i i could have those cameras out and not in a backpack and uh, and have yeah that's to another thing you kind of have to take try for a while is your your case and your straps so that you've got a comfortable system you, you should have system. seen me here in the house i was walking around with my <laughs> yeah. big down jacket and the straps on yeah. and the cameras on just to make sure that they would not be it's a big deal the, up you know things. these are expensive in many cases, one-time only trips. You, you know, you're going to Siberia. You're going to Lake Baikal. You wanna, you wanna be ready. You don't want to waste and it. Exactly. And last but not least, I do this still to the day, to this day. I shoot every day. Nothing special. Often stuff around here, around the house, on my desk, out the window, uh, just to keep going and keep moving my fingers and keep the practice with those cameras just to when when the when the important situation happens to be ready to have all those uh, have everything in my muscle memory so i don't really have to think what i'm doing i hear a lot of people writers say i have to write every day or i will lose that muscle um programmers computer programmers my friend randall schwartz who's a genius programmer says if i don't write two or three hours every day in that language i will forget the language and mm-hmm. I'll be at a real disadvantage two weeks later when I have to kind of relearn everything. I mean, it's, pr- it's probably easiest when you compare it to like a trumpet player. If you, uh, you lose don't... your embrasure. Exactly. You your lose lip. whatever that word just was. Yeah, I your lip. I know the German yeah. word for that. What's but the yeah, German you, word you... for embrasure? Ansatz. Ansatz. You lose your ansatz. Exactly. You lose that. So you have to practice those muscles, actual muscles that you practice. And Love it. But, but the same is true for stuff like uh, working with a camera. You have to practice over and over and Discover over again. Discoverthetopfloor.com. That's where Chris lives on the internet. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Thank you, Chris Marquardt. Thank you. Missing time. Uh, P.S. Chef says, I'm a trumpet player. You're right. Missing time is tough to make up. It's tough. That's to one make of the. Them. That's one of the reasons I used to play the bass guitar. <laughs> it was it was a bit more forgiving in that respect. <laughs> I have to really have to start taking that camera with me everywhere. Thing is, I well, my problem is I love all my cameras for different reasons. I I would. Yeah. I I want to bring the Leica with me. I think I can leave the Sony behind. Lisa thinks she's going to take the OMD, not the Sony. She likes the smaller camera. That is perfectly fine. fine. I, 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 I know what you mean because I, I have the same thing between a lot of my, my film I love cameras them. All and my, my babies. digital cameras. I love them. We have a little, we have almost a museum here. I think there are, <laughs> there are probably way over 60, 70 cameras in the house now. And Wow. Well, and we just got, I just got a point and shoot um, for Lisa's purse. Uh, got a little, uh, Annie Anako had recommended a little uh, Fuji film uh, that does 4K video. So that'll be kind of our oh, cool. video camera as well as our point and shoot. So. 
She's going to carry uh-huh. that in her purse. I think she'll have that most of the time. She's really about uh, moving, about not when, being— When's the Galapagos tour? Uh, we leave in early June, so it's about June. two months away. Well, make make your mind up as early as you can and then practice with those cameras. Yeah. I think I'm going to do the Leica. But see, that's fixed lens 28 millimeter. That's that's a street oh. shooter more than anything. And it's also wide angle, so you yeah. can just use that as your wide angle camera. Right. And then uh, probably have bring, a second one. bring the 5D Mark. Well, I got the 5D Mark for for this specifically for this trip, and it really you will is a want great you'll want that. The camera oh, is great. It's amazing, and I'm bringing the long lens and. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> which which long lens do you know? I have the 7200 um, uh, f2 or f4? No, f4. To 2.8? No, the f4. No, I have that, the 2.8. That's, no, that's I, have the, I have the f4, but I have the 2.8. I, I ended up buying the 2.8 because I wanted something faster. With the image stabilizer. Yeah, it's a really nice lens. That's a monster. It's big, and I have a 2x extender that I can use so that I can get to 400. And for wildlife, nice. I find that's nice. That's good. You yeah. lose a stop. Um, but well, who cares? Who cares with that with camera? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then really uh, and then I'll probably bring, I'll still probably bring, I have an 85 1.2 that is a great portrait lens, but I still might bring it's an, that. This is an amazing portrait lens. It's one of my favorite lenses ever. You think it won't be useful? How? Um, uh, wildlife. Well, if if you can get some the, some sea turtles or stuff on the exactly. beach that you can go close up to, that right. might be a good one. Yeah. And I have a well, fifty one two that's really good too. Those are my two favorites. That's a heavy, super that's fast. A, it's that's big. a bowling ball. Yeah, they're yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's huge. These fast lenses are ridiculous. Ah, uh, that, that's uh, that's what ca- what ends up being in the way between you and right. the photo because it's too heavy. You right. won't take it. Right. I have to figure out my bag situation. <laughs> I have a so sling, you you will be, you will be in a ship, right? Yeah. So what you do is you're you the ship goes to the place, then you get in a zodiac, yes. which takes you to the beach, and then you'll be there for and a then few you're hours there for a few back. hours, and you get back, and then the ship repositions, and and in the afternoon you take a zodiac to mm. place two, so you do two places a day. Mm, cool. There's volcanoes. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's going to be really great. Um, mm, I envy you. I don't know what to carry, though. Lisa's smart because her OMD has like this super range lens. You know, it's like 24 to 400 or something. So one lens and is, is light. she also has an amazing eye. So. And she does. <laughs> damn her. <laughs> Same with me, Monica. She has the better <laughs> eye. <laughs> She's much better eye. There's something about women in photography. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess. I don't know. She's, totally. She's amazing. She gets such great shots. So, all right, Chris. Oh, well. Great. Okay, great. talk to you again in we'll talk a, a week. In a week. Thanks. See ya. Take care. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888 Ask Leo, the phone number. And next, from Topeka, Kansas, Todd's on the line. Hi, Todd. Hi, Leo. How are you doing? I'm great. What can I do for you? How are you? Well, I'm doing good. Uh, my question is, I have an old mid-2010 MacBook Pro 15-inch that it's needing a replacement. Okay. <clears throat> I got the okay from the wife, so she said I can get uh, a new computer. But I'm looking at uh, the 27-inch iMac. Nice. And oh, I've that's a been- sweet... Sweet computer. Yeah, I've been I've been waiting since probably December. Or so they will announce. I am certain new IMAX in the next month or so. Okay. Well, they'll announce it, but then how long usually do they wait? Usually, they- it's pretty quick. What the reason I think we're going to see this is there's a new Intel processor, KB Lake. Uh, you know, Sky. The current crop of IMAX are Sky Lake. Uh, and while there isn't a huge improvement, in fact, one of the reasons you know even your 2010 Mac was actually pretty good is that Intel hasn't been able to make the same leaps in power over the last few years that they had in years past. They're a little bit faster, a little bit more efficient, no massive shifts. So you probably could be, you know, by the current, you know, 27. I just want to warn you so you don't feel bad in a month when they announce the next one. There, there, and there may be other changes. For instance, they're all in on Thunderbolt now. I mean, um, yeah, Thunderbolt 3, the new Type-C connectors. So I would expect the newer iMacs to feature those more. Things like that. Okay. Not something that you're going to cry over, probably, but I just want you to be aware of it. Well, I know you know they haven't updated since, what, October of 2015. That's, so. that's why we're pretty sure they're going to do it this spring. Yeah. Right. 
And I'm, if I can, I'd like to hold out until, you know, I get something that uh, I know it's not future proof, but yeah. hardware that would last a little bit longer. Well, than I, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. Nobody knows what Apple's going to do. Uh, they kind of surprised us this past week with just kind of doing a press release for new iPad and new iPhones and well, they're not exactly new. The new iPhone is just the same iPhone with the red color, and the new iPad is really just a replacement for the iPad 2, the iPad Air 2. Uh, I th the consensus among my Mac expert friends, people really with their ear to the ground, is that Apple will have new iPads to announce and new iMacs to announce in the next month. In April sometime, you think? Probably in April. Okay. And there's, you know, all sorts of market reasons why spring is when you want to announce them, et cetera, et cetera. For, right. for instance, education buying happens a lot in June. So, yeah, I listened to a lot of your podcasts. I yeah, you know then. You've heard all of this. Uh, yeah. yeah. On Mac break, I think yeah. they talked about that. Yeah. we. Um, and I don't pretend to know what Apple's going to do. You know, and Apple certainly doesn't say. It's all based on things like supply chain rumors and stuff like that. Okay. Well, my other question was, uh, the reason I'd like to get something um, is I do very well. I do like once a year when we go on vacation, I take videos and pictures and put them all together yeah. in a, a movie, a home movie yeah. type thing. Right. I, and I'm looking at the current configured IMAX, and it looks like maybe the middle one for $2,000 is kind of where I'm looking at. But should I upgrade any of those that are in there? I know um, like the current one is a 3.2 gigahertz. I core five plenty fast. That's that's fine. Okay. You know the uh, thing you the want. You thing you want most is what you're getting, which is the Retina display, the 5K Retina display. That's right. amazing. That thing is incredible. Uh, as far as upgrades, I'd be happy with the uh, the i5. I don't think you need any faster. That's a pretty fast processor. Um, and 3.2 gigahertz is, I mean, you're not, you know, if you go, if you upgrade it, it's 3.3 gigahertz. You know, I mean, big deal. Right. So yeah. uh, RAM, I though. I7, I, I don't know. No, that no. That All the i7 does is hyper-thread it, maybe a little bit more cash. Uh, okay. And that adds 300 bucks. I wouldn't do that. I would get more RAM. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, you could. Okay, so the stock model is 8 gigs. I think that's right. inadequate. I would, since you're doing photography, go to 16 that's going to add two hundred bucks. Uh, and um, most Apple stuff now, you cannot upgrade yourself. Right, so. and I know this one you can on the twenty-seven inch. There's a panel oh, you can take nice. off and you can put it on. So okay. I didn't know if it'd be worth spinning it somewhere else and then upgrading. Yeah, you might be. Go later. look at uh, Other World Computing. Go to MaxSales.com and see what they charge for thirty-two gigs or sixteen gigs of RAM for that computer. You okay. you may have to remove. They'll tell you you may have to remove. Well, no, I guess not. So there's four slots, and the eight gig comes with two slots occupied. So you could add another eight gigs. So find out what that costs. It's certainly going to be less than the two hundred bucks that Apple charges. And do you keep those? I assume you keep those at the same. Like if the, so, those would be two. Yeah, I mean uh, the two, the most gigabytes. You yeah, the most economical way is to just add to two more of identical of the same kind. The if you want to add more than that, you can take out the Apple RAM and put in, you know, four sticks of eight gigs for thirty-two. Um, yeah, I but think that's the max it'll go to. Yeah, but that'll cost you more because you're throwing out eight gigs of RAM. I also would not get the Fusion Drive. Do not like Fusion Drives. Those are that was my other question. Yeah, that's Apple's hybrid solution with a little bitty SSD and then a big spinning drive. But I don't. I'm not a big fan. Um, SSD all around is better, and add a hundred bucks and get a two hundred fifty six gig flash. That's probably yeah. enough. If you need more, you can use an external drive. That's my question. Yeah. yeah, just spend it on external drive. Yeah, now they have very fast connectors. You know, the Thunderbolt three or uh, uh, your this Mac will be a Thunderbolt two connector is fast enough. It's as almost as fast as an internal drive, so you can get cheaper yeah, no. big 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 drives outside the computer. Um, yeah, what so else think of the see? internal drive as your for your operating system and your applications only. And 256 okay. is plenty for that, yeah. And then store everything else on the external. Yeah, that's what I would do. That's what I have been doing. I have a big uh, Drobo um, uh, drive array, four drive SSD array that I use as my external. It's four or five terabytes. That's that's my data drive. And then everything else okay. is internal, yeah. Um, and I know the, well, the, it's showing the um, 
uh, I, and I have no idea what this is, an M390 uh, Radeon. Um, that's the graphics that, card. That's adequate for... Yeah, I don't... Can you upgrade that? I don't believe you can. You know, I don't think so unless you go to maybe the the next step up. And, yeah, you'd have uh, to buy the next step up. No, that's fine. Yeah, I think so. No, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Apple is not famous for the quality of its video cards. In fact... Uh, one of the reasons neither Oculus nor uh, HTC Vive will make virtual reality stuff for Apple is they don't have the processors, the GPUs, to do it. And Apple doesn't show any indication that they want to. So uh, uh, the guys at Oculus said we're probably never going to make Mac versions of our, of our hardware, which is sad. Okay. But that shows you Apple just they don't care. Okay, that, that helps me on that. I appreciate your help. I do have one more question, if I can ask you just real quick to Certainly. pick your brain on something. Yep. Um, I set up my wife's phone. We use the same Apple iCloud account, and I set her up yesterday, I believe it was. Get her her yesterday. own. <laughs> Correct, and I did that. Get her her own iCloud account, only because you don't want to get her texts, her photos. Yeah. Well, and we would had that issue with the kids. So they have their own, but my wife and I were doing okay, but anyway... So anyway, I've got that set up. But anyway, today, when she looks at her, her iMessages from me, anywhere that they had me on there before was a nickname that she had in her contacts for me. Right. Now it just comes up with my iPhone name, the, the name that I call my iPhone. It oh, doesn't that's have my nickname. Well, she should go into her contacts and add your nickname. And, okay. In her contacts. Take it. In her contacts, yeah. or her phone. Yeah. I, that's she used to be. She used to share nice. contacts with you, so she had in her contacts your nickname. But now that she has her own contact list, that nickname field is not filled out on her phone. So just go in there. She can give you any name she wants. I warn you. <laughs> yeah, I better fill it out for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look who's calling, Mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, well, I will check that. Then. It pulls that from her contact list, and that's one of the things. And one of the reasons you want to have separate iCloud accounts for all users. You can still have family sharing. If you turn that on, apps you buy, she has access to. Uh, you know, music that you buy, she has access to. TV and, and movies, same thing. Right. That and that she, family she sharing is mostly what you want it for anyway. Yeah, yeah. And it, most of that, the kids, you know, they do the apps and stuff. She uses yeah. it just for texting, usually texting and a few phone calls. She doesn't get into all the other apps and, yeah. you know, music and all that. So, yeah. all right, well, I will check hers and see if that's, uh, an issue. I couldn't figure out why my iPhone's name would come up though on. Yeah, because it doesn't know any better. But, not uh, my name. Yeah, you want a Puddinhead. So uh, when. Yeah, exactly. yeah, so when Puddinhead calls, <laughs> it says Puddinhead's calling. Yeah, it must be my husband. All right, well, I appreciate it. <laughs> Have a great uh, day. Enjoy your new computer. I think you're going to like it. I'm glad you called because I always want people to know new iPads and new Macs probably coming in the next month or two. So. Just be aware if you're in the market. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It's my ball and chain on line one. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do. Our show today brought to you by Quicken Loans, the best mortgage lender in the country and the creators of, I think, the best thing that ever happened to home buying geeks, Rocket Mortgage. I love this idea. Last time we bought a house, uh, almost four years ago, before years in October, uh, Lisa and I, you know, went to a normal mortgage lender, and the loan we had to go in person. We had to bring papers, and then they wanted more papers, and then they wanted more papers. We had a vacation planned. They still wanted more papers. We went on vacation. They still wanted more papers. We were faxing stuff to them from the cruise ship. Not a good experience. Took a month to get approved for that loan. Uh, Rocket Mortgage, it could take minutes, and you don't you can do it all online. And not only that, it's a custom loan to fit your needs. So you can, there's, you know, sliders. You can choose the rate, the term of the loan, submit everything you need electronically, bank uh, statements, pay stubs. It's all electronic. And because it's all electronic, it turns around fast. Look, when you get a home loan or you do a refi, you want to go with a lender you trust, a lender that's going to do right by you, but you also want to make it convenient, and you get that all with Quicken Loans and Rocket Mortgage. Quicken Loans is the best lender in the country, bar none, bar none. Easy to work with, savvy, transparent, 
And they understand you want to do this all online. So go to Rocket Mortgage. It's at quickenloans.com slash tech guy. Skip the bank. Skip the waiting. Go completely online. Quickenloans.com slash tech guy. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. It's at quickenloans.com slash tech guy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, you know, all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO, 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Website is techguylabs.com, and there's a chat room. Uh, you'll find a link there at irc.twit.tv if you want to join us in chat. It's always fun to have the kids in the back of the class throwing spitballs and all. Virtual spitballs, so that's okay. And all that. Uh, techguylabs.com for all that information. Uh, maybe I should uh, talk a little bit about uh, this vote in the Senate on Friday to overturn a FCC regulation from late last year designed to protect our privacy. The FCC regulation, which I think was uh, put out in October, said that Internet service providers like Comcast, like Cox, like AT&T and Sprint and T-Mobile and Verizon, Internet service providers had to ask for your permission before they sold your personal information like your browsing history or your current location or your history of locations. It may be a surprise to you that until October of last year, they didn't have to ask their permission, your permission. In fact, we're doing it in a, ver in a variety of ways. You remember um, the uh, super cookie that Verizon, you know, they got caught and consumer demand convinced them to maybe stop doing it, but they used to put a unique identifier on all your internet traffic that was tied to your account. Huh, nice. Turns out internet service providers have for a long time, the less scrupulous ones, the more profit-centered ones, the biggest ones, uh, sending selling your personal information off to advertisers, marketers, and others. So the FCC said, knock it off in October of last year. Well, the U.S. Senate just voted to overturn that regulation. See, really, by the way, the House has to approve it. They will. They'll rubber stamp it. It'll be, uh, at, this is not even a question. Uh, so we'll be back to the way it was. Maybe you didn't know, but the way it was prior to October 2016. And it's probably a good idea that you know that your Internet service provider has no restrictions on selling your personal information to marketers or anyone else who asks and buys and they're glad to do it because it's a nice little profit center. We talk so much about privacy and people call all the time saying, I'm worried about Google. I'm worried about Facebook. I'm worried about the cloud. When <laughs> you should really worry about your internet service provider who knows more about you than any of the above because everything you do goes through them unless you take steps to encrypt it and protect it. I, some people might, if they don't want their ISP to know what they're up to, what sites they visit, uh, where they are, if it's uh, you're on a phone at all times, might want to try to use a VPN. You're kind of actually out of luck with the location stuff, aren't you? Verizon and everybody else knows where you are on your phone. Uh, I guess you could use a VPN, a virtual private network. Then the VPN provider will know where you are and what you're doing, but <laughs> maybe that's better. I just, what I find shameful is that uh, our Congress critters are willing to say willing basically to sell their constituents, us, consumers, up the river uh, in the interests of big business selling our stuff. It's kind of shocking. And I, I think it would be worth a call to your member of Congress. They pay attention to these, uh, saying, I, I don't appreciate that. Maybe you could call your member of the House and say, please vote against this. I should point out, though, it's no different than it was just six months ago. <laughs> it's, uh, it was only recently we got those protections. We didn't have them for years. EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, has a very good page on all this and on the kinds of things 
that ISPs might do uh, now that they can, things they have done in the past. Um, so it would be nice if we could convince Congress or the FCC to overturn these rules, but I think in the current political climate, that's unlikely. Um, some of the things your ISP can do now, uh, thanks to this repealed rule, oh, all sorts of things. Sell your data to marketers. They could take over your searches. As you're searching, if if they wanted to, uh, they could, in, and, and they have done this in the past. None of this is made up. This is stuff that Internet service providers have done in the past. They could, uh, as you do searches, in, in inject ads into your search results. Charter, Cogent, Direct PC, Frontier, and Wide Open West have done that in the past. They use a technology called Paxfire. They could insert ads in all your traffic. We, we taught, did a story a few years ago about how ISPs were using technologies called Form, P-H-O-R-M, and Nebu Ad. Remember we talked about that? To insert ads into your surfing. AT&T, Sprint, and T-Mobile in the past have put software on your phone to record every site you visit and then send it back up to the server so they could sell it. All of this is legal again. And, of course, remember Verizon put those undeletable tracking cookies into all your surfing. <sighs> I'm sure there's some uh, ideological justification. Oh, you know, we don't want to anymore. We don't want to regulate things. Regulation's bad. Well, maybe regulation is the only way you can get these companies to stop doing this kind of stuff. And now, uh, just be aware, uh, your internet service provider knows what you're doing and is glad to sell it along. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. Back to the phones. And Bob in New Mexico. Hello, Bob. Hello, Leo. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. <clears throat> yeah, I wanted to get your uh, opinion on Fi as compared to Verizon. And and the problem I have, I'm, I'm kind of interested in Fi, but the problem I have is I have I grandfathered in on unlimited uh, data. Yeah, so that's pretty, you know, nice. <laughs> there is no unlimited data on Google's telephone service, Google Fi. You pay 10 bucks per gigabyte from bit one, and uh, period. Now, Google's position is, and I think I kind of understand this, uh, well, at least you know exactly what it's costing you. The problem with, quote, unlimited data is there are all sorts of little gotchas. For instance, it's unlimited, yeah, but it might slow down dramatically at a certain point. Um, lately, Verizon, and actually it's thanks to T-Mobile, which has really put the screws to these companies, Verizon, AT&T have made it so that you don't uh, that you can use 22 gigabytes of data a month before they slow you down. So that is it's not tech I mean it's technically unlimited in that you can still get data, but if it's so slow that it's not useful, that's kind of a limit. Um nevertheless, 22 gigabytes is enough that you probably aren't going to hit that limit any reasonable at any reasonable use. It's mostly for people who use it as their primary internet service provider. Uh for, so Verizon really the biggest difference besides pricing and how they price is connectivity, and Verizon. You know they have very good, uh, you know, connectivity all across the country, maybe where you are. Fi is not Verizon. Fi uh, takes connectivity from Sprint, T-Mobile, and U.S. Cellular, and your own Wi-Fi or any Wi-Fi they can use, and and picks the best one. Now, in my opinion, that's going to give you a pretty good result. But if you're in an area where Sprint, T-Mobile, and U.S. Cellular are terrible and Verizon's good, Verizon would be a better choice. Yeah, the other the other kicker is that um, that my phone is my mobile hotspot. Right. So, and I use it to connect. That, that's the only how much modem I have. Check your bill and see how much data you use a month. It's huge. If it's more than 22 gigabytes, then you really don't have true unlimited service. You have... You know, unlimited data, but it slows down a lot after time. You never get a slowdown with Fi, but you pay 10 bucks a gigabyte for each and every one. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So I I, um, I use Fi. Uh, my wife uses uh, Verizon. I use Fi. I use T-Mobile. I use Sprint, and I use AT&T. 
I have phones on all those services. And, you know, the, how your connectivity is really is the most important thing, right? I mean, if Bob, if you want good Internet service where you are, you might want to use the one that gives you the best speeds. I, I right. and, I, and I really like the service. I haven't noticed any slowness or anything like that. <clears throat> but I also really like the Google phone. Ah, well, you can get a Google phone from Verizon. Right, but you also talked about how they have their own operating systems and how Google's not, not Verizon, not not with the Pixel. Verizon's Pixel is effectively the same as Google's Pixel. Oh well, that's good to know. They put they do put some of Verizon software on there. You know those red application icons you see. Right, um, but you know some of them are ones you want. For instance, if you're an NFL fan, Verizon is the only one that gives you NFL streaming on your phone, so you will want that app. Most of the other apps, I either disable or delete. If you can delete them, del delete them. If you can't, just disable them. But right. other than that, it's still the same phone. They don't they don't add a lot. And I don't think Verizon initially Verizon was saying they might slow down Google's updates. I think they finally they've they've agreed to let those updates go through. So I think that owning a Pixel phone from Verizon would be pretty much the same as owning it from Fi. Oh, well, that's good to know. And yeah. you and you really like the uh, Pixel, don't you? Love it. Yeah, it's not an inspiring design. It's a very kind of mundane design, but it's functional and it's got a, one of the best cameras on the market. And it's pure Google, which I think there's a lot to be said for that. I don't use the Google Pixel launcher because and that's one of the things I love about Android is you get to choose your launcher. I use a highly customized launcher called Action Launcher, but that's just uh -huh. me. Um but but the point is, you can do whatever you want. It's a pure Android experience, and it's always kept up to date. So uh, yeah, that's yeah. the main reason I like it, yeah. That, th I respect your opinion, and that really helps a lot. I'm very interested in um, the next Samsung Galaxy S8. They're going to announce that on Wednesday. And that's going to have some innovative features, I believe. Uh -huh. So if, you're not, if you don't have to uh, buy a phone now... You might wait, but that won't work with five. Verizon will probably have it, but they won't have it for another month. It's going to be announced on Wednesday and available in late April. Well, I'm not, I'm not, it's not urgent or anything, but I just did really like the, the Google phone. It's a great phone. You, it's such a good phone. That, you know, the fact that you can pay monthly without, without interest is pretty I nice. love Fi. I am very happy with Fi. I think it's a it's you know I know what I'm paying. It's a twenty bucks a month with unlimited for unlimited calls in the U.S., unlimited mex text messaging, and then ten bucks a month or frac for a gigabyte of data or you know fractional data. Um, mm -hmm. And it's as a result. But see, I'm not using it like you would use it. You're going to use it as your hotspot. You're going to go. You know, you if you use twenty gigabytes of data, that's two hundred bucks. No, I understand. So and I think and I think I do use a lot of a lot check of check your uh, bill and see what you use. That's an important data point. I think I think it's over forty. Whoa! So that's four hundred bucks a month with five. That's not reasonable. No, no. You'd you're be better right. off with Verizon then. Yeah. But get the Pixel through Verizon. Best of both worlds. Right. And and uh, do I need one hundred and twenty eight? You know, that's an individual thing. Check and see how much you've filled up on your phone. You certainly don't if you don't put a lot of pictures, movies. I haven't filled up 128. I've filled up about 64. Uh -huh. And I put 20 audiobooks on there, each of them a gig. So, oh, wow. yeah, 128 is really only for somebody who wants their entire music collection on the phone or uh -huh. or movies. All right, well, thank you. My pleasure. You Take care. Bye-bye. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888 ask Leo. Competition's great. We have a choice, and that's what's made cell phones a lot more affordable, uh, work a lot better. Uh, because, and primarily, I think credit to T Mobile, which was the number four carrier, and they had to try harder, right? And as a result, by offering better deals, unlimited data that's really unlimited, things like that, they started winning more and more customers. They are no longer number four. I don't know where they rank, but they're at least three after AT and T and Verizon, and um, I think there. I think that as a result, all of the companies sat up and took notice. Competition is a very good thing, and we, that's one of the things we really, really want to keep going here. We don't want a lot of bunch of mergers because then if everybody, you know, if there's two phone companies, you can bet you won't get a good deal ever again. Christy in Tom's River, New Jersey. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Christy. Hi, 
Hi, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you. What can I do for you? Um, my parents have an all-in-one uh, HP desktop, a uh, really big screen, probably about, I'm going to say, seven, eight years old. Okay. Um, they keep clicking on things and getting viruses. I keep resetting <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> I just, somebody, a friend of mine just posted uh, rules for parents on the internet. <laughs> Oh, well, and it's great. And that's one of them, by the way. Stop it. <laughs> Don't click on oh things. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I keep trying to tell them over and over. Anyway, the only thing they do with that is um, they're on Chrome. So what I want to do, um, they barely have anything on the hard drive. I think they probably have maybe 150, 200 gigs. Um, I have some pictures on there. But what I essentially want to do is it, and to see if this is doable, can I do a dual, a dual boot? Like, can I have Windows on half the hard drive and put, like, a Chromebook, turn it into a Chromebook? Unfortunately, not easily. Chrome, The Chrome OS, and they would be great on a Chromebook. Mom and Dad yeah, should be using a Chromebook. Unfortunately, right. Google, even though the Chrome OS, which Chromebook's based on, is open source, they didn't make an easy installer. At, you know, Linux would be easy to put Linux on there, but not Chrome oh, OS. Right. There is a company that makes Chrome OS available as a third-party installer. Um, and my experience has been it does not work well, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna actually recommend it. They're they're aimed at um, schools and stuff that want to take their old PCs and put Chromebook on there. It's Neverware.com. There, it's called Cloud Ready. You, I guess you could try it. Um, okay. But my suggestion is. Forget that. They need a new computer anyway. Theirs is pretty old. That's true. Um, and the only thing, I would get them a Chromebook, but my daughter has one. I got one for her, and she loves it. But yeah. they need the big, the big, big screen. Okay. The good news. They make something called a Chrome Box, which is just the base unit. Looks like a Mac Mini or something. It's just a hockey puck device. Asus oh, is makes that the USB thing? Yeah, you plug a monitor. It's got a monitor port on it. And Ooh. so you could plug any size monitor into it. Mom and dad like a giant monitor because it's hard for them to see. No problem. It's got an HDMI port. You plug in any monitor. You put a TV on it if you want. Plug in a keyboard oh, and a mouse. It's just like their HP All-in-One, except it's now running Chrome OS. So that's a better way to go, in my opinion. But with the, Chrome, with the HP being an All-in-One, there's no monitor plug. Yeah, they need to buy a monitor. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have to buy a monitor. They'd have to buy. Fortunately, monitors are not expensive. Yeah, that's not bad. That's few, definitely. Yeah, doable. so the Chrome box, I'm looking at an Asus, it's $159. You can get a $200 27 inch monitor. You can get a keyboard and mouse for 20 bucks. So now mm -hmm. so now for under four hundred dollars you've got an all in one. That that really is gonna be a much better choice for them. They can't get into trouble with it. They can click all they want on those dumb links. Now the one thing it won't stop is the pop-ups that say your Windows PC has a virus, call us. Those are just okay. pop-ups. But you tell them, Mom, Dad, it's not a Windows PC. And the good news is even if they call those guys, those guys can't mess up their Chrome box, but they can charge your credit card. So you, you still have that problem of convincing Mom and Dad. It's not Windows. These are bogus. Let me see if I can find the list of rules for parents on the Internet. And I'll, if I can, I'll put it at techguylabs.com. I saw it. One of my Facebook friends posted it. It was hysterical, and but it was right on. It was, it was, right, it was, it was right. all of those things, you know. Mom and Dad, nobody's sending you anything. You didn't win the contest. Don't enter the contest. You can't win the contest. Don't take the quiz to find out which Spice Girl you are on Facebook. Don't, <laughs> you know, all of the things that you shouldn't do, you know not to do. But but unfortunately, uh, often uh, parents don't for some reason, and right. and it would be nice to just put this on the wall, and they would it would remind them get them a Chrome. Oh, they would be it's be so much better. They surf the net, they do email, they look at pictures. That's all they do. That's all, they do. That's all most people do. True. Chromebooks perfect for most people. We, I'm glad your daughter had the experience because now you can see. Yes, for sure. She absolutely loves it. She's right next to me right now on her Chromebook as usual. <laughs> Acer does make a 21-inch all-in-one called the Chrome Base. Okay. So that would be another choice. In fact, I think there are a number of companies that, that make, you know, it's everything you need. Let me just look at the Chrome Base. It's on Amazon. It costs... Okay, that would actually be good because I think their screen right now is a 21-inch. This is, this is $319. That's not bad. Yep. And if you want a touchscreen, you might want a touchscreen for them. 
uh, because then they could put Android apps on it. It's a little more expensive. It's 400 bucks. That includes a touch okay, screen, yeah, the keyboard, the mouse, and everything you need. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Leo. You're welcome. Thanks for the call. Acer, A-C-E-R, Chromebase. Thank you to the chat room who suggested that. Um, there's an LG. I, I, you know, more and more companies are making these. The, the, and for, for less sophisticated users, whether that's your kids, your parents, that's you, these are really good choices because it's just so much harder to get into trouble if all you have is, you know, a Chrome browser. And that's a secure browser. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's, you know, the, all you have to do, though, you still have to say, don't take the quiz on Facebook. <laughs> you don't have to find out which Power Ranger you would be. That's not necessary. <laughs> you know, and you didn't win a contest. So don't, you know, don't go to the form. They still, they still get in trouble, right? Click a link. It says, uh, your bank, this is your bank. Uh, uh, yeah, we need your uh, password and login there. Uh, could you just fill that out? And if, you know. People fall for those things, so you still have to do some education. But you don't have to worry anymore about viruses, malware. It's a thing of the past, not on the Chromebook ever. Yeah, And if, if they ever, you know, do screw it up somehow, and I don't know how you would, there's something called a power wash in the settings. You just power wash it, and it's and it, within a minute, it's back to the way it was when it came from the factory. And that's the nice thing about these cloud... No, of course, it needs internet, right? So your parents have to have an internet access. But that's the nice thing about these cloud-based computers is everything they're doing is really in the cloud. So even if you erase the whole thing and start over, once they log into their Google account, all their stuff's there. They're, you know, it's exactly as it was. Any Chrome extensions they installed, pictures they put on uh, Google Photos, documents they wrote with Google Docs, they're all there. And I think that's really nice. Doesn't protect you from all Nigerian princes. They're still out there. Are they still out there, actually? Does, do people still get that email? I'm a Nigerian prince. I have $14 million deposited in a bank in the United States, and I just need somebody to help me get it out, and I'd be glad to give you 10% if you'd just help me. Do you still get that email? Anybody ever get any money? <laughs> no. No, those are scams. 8888-ASK-LEO. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Ah, Asus has an i7 Chrome box. Wow. Well, let's see. Now, now we're talking. I was just bemoaning the fact that we're talking about Chrome OS, which I think is, for many people, all the computer you need. It's safe and reliable. But I was bemoaning the fact that most of these Chrome OS devices are kind of cheap, plasticky. Uh, you know, they want to keep them under a few hundred bucks, mostly because it's sold to students uh, and cheapskates. But some of us would still use Chrome OS. This is really a perception problem, I think. A lot of people would like to use Chrome OS that would like a nice, well-built computer. And uh, more memory would allow more tabs. I mean, it's not like you're, uh, you're you know, designing rocket ships on this thing. You can't. But um, you can do, you know, I mean, what, some things that will slow it down, like photo editing, video editing, or just having a lot of tabs open in your browser. So I'd like to see some higher end stuff. P Chrome, uh, the Pixel, Chromebook Pixel, which was made by Google, has been discontinued. That was a you know twelve hundred dollar laptop, all aluminum, solid as a rock, beautiful touchscreen. That was a high end Chromebook, but I don't think they sold a whole lot of them. That might that might have proven the point, right? Glenn on the line from San Pedro, California. Hey, Glenn, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Welcome. Hi, Leo. Thank you for taking my call. Thanks for calling. I've listened to you for years. I'm a photographer, and I'm up to date as far as photographic equipment. Uh, nice. What I do used you... to use F4 as a film, and now I use the D800. You're an icon man. The I, yeah, the 800 yeah. is an amazing camera. What a great camera. Yeah, it's it's been a fine camera. and But I'm pretty outdated in other areas. Uh, I still use Macintosh tubes with clip horns for my sound system. <laughs> and, and we're talking M-C-I-N-T-O-S-H, not M-A-C. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> the sound is, of course, beautiful. Oh, it's incredible. But, uh, I have a friend who has, in fact, a, a, the exact setup, Macintosh, tube amps, clip horns, and it does sound yep. remarkable. It's an amazing sound. Oh, 
the difference between that and digital only sound is is just incredible. But anyway, I'm a uh, dinosaur in other areas. Um, I have a, a 27 inch monitor and a XP Professional <laughs> <laughs> with a dual core. Uh, three something gigahertz. Uh, now, it doesn't matter. But as a photographer, do you use software for you, for your managing your uh, photos and all that? Uh, I use a Nikon program, a View NX, and I also okay. use uh, Photo Elements. So you don't use Lightroom or Big Boy Photoshop. Uh, no, I have Big Boy Photoshop, but I rarely use. You it. like Elements better. Yes, I do. Yeah, so those but, both are less demanding. Elements really is full Photoshop minus a few features. Um, I find that I put more attention into taking the picture. Yes. And my uh, changes yes. to it afterwards are yes. rare. Yes. I do quinceaneras and headshots and, yeah. you know, family stuff and, and like that. But my problem is uh, my, uh, my uh, uh, browser, Mozilla Firefox, gave me notice that they're not going to support XP no, XP's been November. Of yeah, and that was the last browser to, to hold on because Microsoft abandoned it years ago. Uh, Google even yeah. abandoned, abandoned it last year for Chrome. So, uh, if <laughs> yeah, XP is not so, a safe operating system to continue to use. So, Right now, I have I listened to you for years. I, I use not thirty-two uh, malware, Good. malabytes, and all that kind of stuff, and I've never had a problem. Obviously, I don't click on anything that I don't know. Yeah, you're probably not at, at risk because you're, you know, you're, you know, you're limited in what you do on on the computer. And, right. Uh, I use a, a one terabyte spinning drive, which I replaced a little bit ago, and then two fifty hard drive for the programs. But what I want to go to is a desktop. That has maybe the i5 from listening to you. I guess I don't need the i6. Yeah, that's adequate. But but I, I want a, a good quality desktop, and I don't know who to go to. Well, I would submit that what you really want is a great monitor, enough power to run the programs you use today, and perhaps uh, some power to run something like Lightroom. Lightroom is a really great program. It'll work fine with your D800 and D810 raws uh, but it's a great management program don't think of it as a photo editing program of course it does have those features but it's also just really great for managing including things like creating a gallery with a watermark for your for your business that you can share right. with clients there's just things that professionals use all the time so uh and it would be hard to use lightroom on your old machine i'll be honest with you so uh, but an i5 the is a much you know it's probably hundreds of times faster than your existing core duos. Uh, and a, a faster drive will make a big difference. Uh, an SSD drive will make a big difference in terms of overall performance. But I think for you, the biggest thing, and I think it's true for most photographers, is an accurate, rich, high-detailed screen so you can see your photos right. Well, I have a ViewSync 37-inch. All of this was great stuff. Excuse me, 27-inch. Right. All of this was great but, stuff 10 years ago. We've come yeah. a long way. Uh, you're going to get uh, uh, a better color gamut on modern monitors. You're going to get P3 color gamut. It's just going to be a more accurate monitor. I, you know, if if I had, uh, if I were you and I had $1,299 to spend, I would get a 27-inch iMac, to be honest with you. I don't know how tied to Windows you are. Yeah, are I hear you, you. Are you stuck on Windows? Well, I don't know. I've used it for years. I'm very familiar with it. Do me a favor. Go to the Mac Apple Store. Somebody sells the latest iMacs. And yeah. look at the 5K iMac. Just spend a little time with it. And if that doesn't, at that point, if you don't say, okay, I get it, I have to have this, then there are plenty of great Windows machines. I just was looking at a new HP NV all-in-one with a 34-inch curved display that is a work of art. It's got a B&O. Uh, sound it's really wonderful and it's 1800 bucks a little pricey but it's a very nice system i also have and i have to say i love it and it might be just right for you it's an all-in-one made by microsoft but it's kind of got a nice little difference it's called the uh, surface studio and one of the things it okay. does is it lies the the all-in-one is in front of you but you can also lie it down to 20 degrees so it's like a drafting table and it uses pen wow. and Certainly for an illustrator, this is the best thing ever invented. But I think even for a photographer, it would be a great way 
to review photos. It's touch, so you can swipe through photos. It has a it has a really nice high res screen. It is a gorgeous high res screen. It's a little pricey because well, it's Microsoft. But I but that I that may be my favorite Windows PC out there. I'd certainly look at the Microsoft Surface Studio. Okay, what I also have been looking at is the Dells. There's Dell makes some nice excellent Dell machines. I you know, Dell is my go to, my default go to. All of our business office has Dell. I use Dell at laptops at home. The XPS thirteen is one of the best laptops ever made. But the interesting thing you just uh, informed me up is the uh, the monitor. My my uh, ViewSync is not as sharp as the photographs no. that I make on no. my Canon printer. Of course, it's not. I'm telling you, you want a five. You want to look at these five K monitors, and frankly, Apple does it best. Sorry. Dell does make very good twenty seven and even thirty four inch. High res monitors, but you you really want to look for a monitor that has accurate color reproduction, right? That's important to you. Uh, uh, so if I uh, go with the Dell, I go with a twenty seven inch. Yeah, and look at their look at their uh, the color gamut. You want P three for for the broadest range of colors, and you want you, the the good monitors cost a little more because they're color accurate. But I think for a photographer, man, you want that. You really do. Now you could put any Dell machine on that monitor. Dell's machines are are rock solid, very good. What you, I'm going to spend a lot of money. This is your business, right? So spending a couple of grand, you spend more than that on your cameras. This is a big part of your business. So I think you need to get good late model hardware. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. We ran out of time. I, I'm still here, though, uh, Glenn, if you have some additional questions. Well, I grew up in Petaluma, and my uh, no kidding. parents brought me down here when I was in grammar school, and I still have relatives in Healdsburg, Sonoma, Guerneville. Oh, well, come visit school. us. Come visit your family and then stop by in the studio. I'd love to see you. Oh, I would, I'd be glad to do that. I'm going to pick these things up, and then I'll do that. By the way, I'm a Nikon user, but I love Canon printers. <laughs> Go figure. No, the Canon printers are very good. I'm actually an Epson uh, color for Epson photography. Uh, the Epson photo yeah. printers are, are my favorite, but Canon makes excellent photo printers as well. Yeah, I think I, that. I think if you could spend the money, you would see a big improvement these days. The monitors particularly are looking better. I would focus on getting a great monitor. The, the rest of it's less important. Well, I delivered some photos the other day and on a flash drive uh, to these people, pictures of their uh, son, headshots, and he has a monitor that's like 30 inches or yeah. something. <laughs> and I put it on that, and I'm going, oh, my yeah. God. You know what? That's what I'm saying. If you went to the Apple store and you just spent one minute looking at that 5K monitor, if you didn't come out of the store saying, okay, I got to upgrade, I'd be shocked. Well, you know, even though I only shoot a uh, six-megabyte file for headshots, it was just absolutely oh, yeah. detailed, right down yeah. to every eyelash. You're not seeing everything on that old ViewSonic, yeah. Yeah, I hear, I hear you. Well, I appreciate that suggestion, and, and I would love to come up there, and Good. I think I'll plan to do that. I'll look for you. Thanks, Glenn. Assuming you're not going to take off to uh, well, a call. I am cha I'm traveling in various times. Uh, you know, the thing to do is email tickets at twit.tv because they know my schedule and say what dates you're interested in, and they'll let you know if I'll be around. Okay, the last thing is uh, I started with Nikon film cameras. Yeah, me so too. So I had yeah. all full-frame lenses. Nice. So I, I did the D200, the D300, which were DX, and then I went to the D800. And, and Nikon uh, didn't change their mount, did they? You can still use those. No. You? Yeah, no, that's you nice. Can use every. You don't get the electronics in the lens, but that's fine. You're used to that. Yeah. Well, I have a, uh, uh, all the lenses are great, but I have a 28 to 300, which I love, wow. which has a, a VR in it. Nice. And, uh, you know, I shoot surf shots. I'm just three blocks from the ocean. Oh, isn't that and, great? Uh, you need that 300 then, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, my best lenses are the 85 and the 24 to 85, and they are just tack sharp. Yep. And 85 is a good portrait, nice. portrait length. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah, you don't want to get too well, close. Well, I appreciate to <laughs> your program. I've listened to you for years and will continue. And thanks, thanks Glenn. Go my pleasure. The up to date do, monitor. Do some shopping just to see. Just to see. You're just looky loo. Just to okay. see what's out there. But it is a good idea to Thank look at them. Much, yeah, man. you're you're welcome. Thanks for calling, Glenn. I'll look forward to seeing you up here in Petaluma sometime.
Last segment of the day, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Be back next week, of course, talking tech. All week long, the website continues strong. It's techguylabs.com, and it's free. It's open, no charge, no sign up. Just go there, techguylabs.com. You can get links, uh, answers to every question, video and audio after the fact, too. Techguylabs.com. And of course, uh, you'll find a link there to our Twit network, which that's my podcast network. We do, uh, it turned out, I could have I could have rested on my um, my laurels and uh, just worked weekends. Maybe that would have been a good idea. But I thought, well, I got five days a week free now. <laughs> Maybe I should do some other stuff. So I'm about twelve years ago started doing podcasts, tech, all tech, you know, deep dive tech enthusiast stuff, and it's done pretty well. Built a little business around it, and you find those. Uh, there's a link at techguylabs.com or go to Twit. This Week in Tech, twit.tv, for more tech stuff all week long if you're a hardcore enthusiast. And we have podcasts of the show there, too. Uh, let's see. Bob in San Antonio has been hanging on for an awfully long time. Thank you for, for your patience, Bob. Welcome. Oh, man, I can't believe I got you, Leo. You made it. I have been watching you since 89 and mm. trying to get you ever since then. <laughs> Well, that's a long, that's a long darn time. Twenty seven years later, you got in. I cannot believe it. <laughs> watching your clock go over your shoulder, there watching it tick, tick off. No, I'm running tick. out of time. I oh, I'm so thing. glad. I apologize. I'm so sorry. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience, Bob. All right, let me let me get to the the point real quick here, because we don't have much time. Um, I'm trying to pair. Well, actually, it is pairing. But I'm not getting this, this the uh, gaming sound through the, the uh, LG uh, HB760 headphones. So you have headset. you have Bluetooth uh, Bluetooth headset. It's a headset right. that means it has a microphone too, or it's just headphones. Right. It, yeah, no, it's a headset. Headset. It's, it can be used with a phone or, or whatever. Okay. And and um, now, does it work with the phone? It, I don't have a phone. I don't. I, okay, I, so the only uh, thing you would use it is with with a game. Well, no, I've got several things. I got the Apple TV box, I've got the PS3, I've got uh, a, a tablet, which is an eight. Uh, um, what do you call it? I can't think of the so name. So, so just to cut to the chase, your your headset works with other things. Yeah, well, yeah, it pairs. I got an iPod way way back. It pairs, and you can hear it, and. Uh, when I'm you know, when I'm testing, my but, but you're saying when you're playing a game on your PC, it doesn't. I get no sound through okay. the headset. So there's the problem is that there are a couple of places you have to look. Obviously, you have to use your control. Well, I, it's a Windows machine. You have to use your control panel on your Windows machine and make sure that you've got the sound routed properly. And you know sometimes Windows does that right. Sometimes it doesn't. You should when it pairs, it should say, "Oh, okay, don't use the speakers. Go to the headphones." So what the first thing to do is to see if the operating system is playing sound properly. And to figure that out, you could go to YouTube or you could play some music with Windows Media Player. You could use do something to see, not the game, but to see if you're getting sound properly outside the game. Then the next issue might be the game itself. Because oftentimes games have their own audio settings. Uh, and, uh, and so you want to make sure in the game settings that you've also selected the Bluetooth headset. Okay. So there's two yeah. different places you have to look. Yeah, this... I, I've I've looked and gone through everything. What blows me away, and, and they, I called the the manufacturer, of course, their tech support. They were no help at all. It was routed through India or someplace. Yeah. Those guys, they just have a notebook and they don't know what yeah, they're not. Really, I mean, he was he was just doing the best he could. I said, yeah. Well, it was like you're not going to be able to help me. I said, I know it doesn't make sense to me that it it, it will you... go through all the tests. Okay, but what but, but what I want you to do though, and I, maybe you have done this, can you hear anything outside the game? If you, uh, if you go to YouTube, can you hear a YouTube video? If you play music, can you can you know through Windows? Can you can you hear the Windows beeps and boops? Can you hear anything? Oh, no, I don't have Windows going through the. I'm not using it on a computer. I'm using it on a 42 inch uh, LG. Oh, I misunderstood. Uh, uh, large, large screen. Pan. I misunderstood. So, yeah, yeah, what is the game playing on then? Is it is it a console? It's a it's a it's a PS3 console. I misunderstood. I thought this was on a computer. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. So, what are you pairing? You're pairing to the TV, not to I'm the console. Pairing, right. I'm pairing it to the T. Well, I'm pairing it to the PS3, I'm, and I guess through it, the HB, HDMI cable, it would go ahead and pair through the uh, TV through that. 
So everything's HDMI. No, I, in fact, I bet you if you turned up the sound on the TV, even that's when you've correct. paired the headsets, it still comes to the TV, doesn't it? No, I've cranked it up. No, it doesn't come out of anything. You hear no sound at all. Only, only if I'm testing it, it comes through the headset, the, okay. the, the actual Bluetooth headset. And you're testing it in the on the PS3. Through the PS3, right? I, I'm, there's, there's a voice controller that you can make yourself sound like Mickey Mouse. Or, and that all works. Um, low. All that works, and it says it sees it. It says it, it says the oh, right. number. It sees everything. So the, the Apple TV does not see it. My iPod sees it. In fact, I'm streaming right now through my iPod to my LG TV. Got it. And and that so, works fine. So you so let me just make sure I have it right now. You're playing a game on your PS3. The PS3 is connected via HDMI to your television set. Correct. If you don't pair the headphones, you do hear the audio on the TV. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay, so we got audio coming out of the PS3, and it's going via HDMI to the TV. You then pair your headphones to the PS3. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, via Bluetooth. So your headphones correct. are paired to the PS3 via Bluetooth. And you can even do, you know, the sound changer on the PS3, Correct. and it works fine. Yep. But for some reason, when you play your game, you Nothing. get no audio. You don't get audio on the TV, and you don't get audio on the headsets. No. Nope. I am baffled. Maybe the chat room has some suggestions. I don't know why that's not working. It sounds like the, the PS3 was smart enough to turn off the TV... In fact, is smart enough to send audio to the headsets because the voice changer works. Right. But, but for some reason, when you get in the game, then there's nothing. I don't. It, it, if you guys, I know you got a lot of good smart guys out I there. I know. I'm watching the chat room, and they they tell them, tell them if there's anybody in the chat room that has the LG uh, HBS 760 headphone Bluetooth headphone set that they could make it work with a PS3. Tell them to get to me to <laughs> at Gmail. <laughs> okay. Uh, or we'll put it in the show notes, uh, techguylabs.com. Um, I don't think it's these headphones because the headphones are... What game do you play? When are you playing? What game? I'm a first-person shooter, and I don't like any of the Zelda like ones that you like the, the, where they use the too much. I, I like the quick action, like uh, Call of Duty. I've got almost all the Call of You're Duty. You're playing Call of Duty. It's at 64. Awesome. 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 I love it. Well, you know, people sometimes think us uh, us uh, sexagenarians aren't yeah, game no. players. We play no, games. No. I, there's guys there's guys that I'm actually beating their, their young kids, and they say, oh, thank I you. put it right in there, I don't lie about it. I say, thank you. They don't believe you. They think you're a 14-year-old. They don't believe you. Yeah, you're lying. I said, well, I'll, I'll tell you what. I was 13 years old when President Kennedy was shot. I figured it out from there. <laughs> wow. You, yeah. Those of us who remember that are of a different era, I think. Exactly. Um, you, and you've looked in the game. The game itself doesn't have any settings for sound, probably. Yeah, it does, but I, and I, they're all correct. Everything's, and, everything and, I can, and I've looked everywhere, and every menu I can find on anything I, that's it's connected to or through, and it, it just it baffles me because if it works well, it's showing me the testing pattern to see, okay, does it see it? It says, yes, it sees it. It gives me the correct name. I do, I, you know, I hate to do this, Bob, because you waited so long. I just don't know. And uh, the chat room is giving us some suggestions. Maybe we'll have some suggestions for you. Go visit techguylabs.com in a couple of hours. Maybe somebody will have some idea. I have to run, unfortunately. We're running out of time. I just, I don't know. Thanks to Kim Schaffer for answering the phones. Thanks to you for joining me. We'll see you next time. Have a great Geek Week. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy show for today. I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, the Tech Guy is just the tip of the iceberg. We do nearly 30 shows now on the Twit Netcast Network, and you'll find them all at twit.tv. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPad on iPad Today. You get your daily dose of tech news from Tech News Today and our weekly roundtable show This Week in Tech. It's all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next time with another great Tech Guy podcast. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.
You, Bob, you got you stumped me. I got to turn over all the cards and give you the ten dollars, as they used to say on What's My Line. I uh, I don't know. I tell you, I, it's driving me crazy because that's the reason I bought them. Because my wife does. I'm I'm a terminal COPD patient, and I, I can get up and walk the twenty feet to my bedroom, um, from my bed to my bathroom, and I, I feel like I ran a marathon. I, I oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's... that's all right. I had a lung collapse in oh. 2008, and then I was given a terminal diagnosis in 2011. Oh. I'm still, I'm still hanging on. <laughs> Hang in there. Yeah, that's six <laughs> well, years. I, I Good am. job, man. I, I am. You give us all hope. It, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm doing it because, uh, like I said, I'm pretty much bedridden, and the PS3, I, I would say, I don't care if I live to be 106, I would still play the games. I'm, I'm just that type of person. Well, you know, I'm with you. I do the same thing. I oh. love them. I oh, love you them. You crack me up so much. When you when you started doing the, I'll gladly pay you on Tuesday. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll gladly pay you Tuesday. <laughs> so um, uh, it does. It, is it just COD or is it all the games you play? Everyone. Every, so it's every, the it's not the it's game. Not, yeah, it's something with the machine. It's not the game. Somebody suggested uh, checking the PS3 firmware. Make sure you have the latest. But you, it does that automatically. It updates. Yeah, it, do, yeah, it does all that. I don't amazing. think that's it. What a puzzle. I know it. It's just driving me crazy. You know what? I've even gone through four or five different headsets, and all of them, I mean, from Top Gear to, I can't even remember all the names. So they all do the same thing. Well, no, no. They, they, well, some of them worked, but they didn't work good. Ah. Anywhere near good enough to like what I should have been. A lot of them had to have like what do you call it, a dongle that you plug right. into the USB port. Yeah, some of them are analog, and so they need a USB uh, connector. Yeah. Yeah. But and that I, that those like are the one you have. Like crap. The one you have is very good. Huh? The one you have is very good. You got a good I one. I, it comes very highly. I got an IT tech buddy that he's baffled with it too, and. Well, you got me. I, I just, uh, it should work. Oh, one other quick question, too. I've got an Acer 5740-5760. Now, I, I've i been out of touch with you for a while, I'm sorry to say, but I'm back on with you yeah. now. And yeah. like I said, I've been watching you since 89. Nice man. But, That's um, great. Acer, the Acer 5740, my hard drive started going out. My ears are bad, so I didn't notice the whine from it until it got really bad. And now it sounded like, you know, something's scraping the top. Oh, I hate <laughs> that <what> sound. <laughs> and I want to get a, another drive. Do you know whether a, uh, it's got a 250 gig uh, hard drive? Um, would it handle a terabyte on there? Do you on know? the PS3? No, on the Acer 5740. What model of, uh, what version of Windows is it? Uh, Windows 7. Yes. There's, there's my. I'm looking at you on the, on my thing now. That's my, my headset right there. <laughs> yep, I got the headset up. <laughs> um, so, uh, and it does say make sure you got a genuine product because sometimes there's some counterfeiting yeah, going exactly. on. Yeah, I made sure that. I th see no reason why this shouldn't work, and it makes me I mad know, that I it doesn't. I don't, I don't either, and it's just driving me crazy. I bet it is, and you know what? I love it that you've got these games because that's a great. You know, entertainment for you. It's a lot of oh, fun. Absolutely, absolutely. I've got. Like I say, nobody believes me, but I all tell. I tell them I all. I love it that you're beating those kids. Those darn kids. I hate them. <laughs> They're too darn good at these games. Well, 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 one thing about them is you never know when they're cheating. Well, that's true, guy, too. I had one guy take away all my hard-earned... Oh, I hate that. I'll tell you, that my, one of my favorite games, maybe you've you're, you're heard of it, Far, Far Cry 3 and Far Cry... I love Far Cry. I have it on my Far system. Oh, Far Cry I love it. Four, it's beautiful. Four, Isn't it four gorgeous? Let you me, feel yeah, like you're in the jungle. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I don't know how you could, anybody that's any kind of a gamer at all, I don't care how old you get... That you couldn't enjoy something. It's like a beautiful that. game. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, I played on the Xbox. Yeah. When they when they had the, the little uh, mini chopper. <laughs> I know. So much fun. You didn't have it in the other one. Uh, I bet your wife is glad you have this. Oh yeah, I'm so addicted to that game. I, I think that's hours. fantastic. Sometimes I'm up all night long playing it. And, and you can't use a hardwired headset because that's really what you should be doing. No, I, I don't want to. I did do that. I've got, on the back of the TV, it's got one of those mini jacks. Yeah. And then i got to use a mini jack on the other end. So I bought a 20-foot mini jack. Yeah, just a long cord. Yeah. Yeah, and I run it under the floor uh, in the car. It's not the end of the world. That's always going to sound better, by the way, than a...
The well, mic no. won't work. I, you can't talk to the kids if you do that, but... Yeah, I know. For, for, I don't really care about talking to the kids that, that much. Oh, come on. You should. You go, neener, neener, neener. <laughs> <laughs> I beat you. <laughs> nah, because you, you know why I don't do that is because, and I, and I don't even get into the, to the chat on the, the... Oh, I know. They're terrible. I know. There's some of them that are so good. One guy took away all my and stuff that took me over 400 hours that's, to gain. You, that's terrible. I don't know how he did oh, it. Oh, that's a hack of some yeah, kind. Oh, oh absolutely. I oh, that's that. terrible. That's a huge problem on these games. 400 hours I had. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's terrible, Bob. Beat. I discovered everything on it, and then he <sighs> killed me. And he took away all my stuff. You know what I'm going to do, Bob? Because... Um, I don't know if he'll. I, my friend Paul Thorada does the Windows Show. is a big Call of Duty gamer. Really? Now he plays on Xbox, but he might have friends with PS3. Let me ask him if he has any suggestions. All right. Well, lately I've been playing the Far Cry more than anything I else. I love Far Cry. Stopped, you play I three or four? It it's, I, I got four. I bought three and I loved it. I beat it, and then I got four. It took me four hundred hours to beat it. Huh. I, I just it. I think this is so cool. <laughs> because, you know, you can't move a lot, but this way no. you get to really have the experience no. of just having a great time. Well, it helps keep your mind sharp. It helps Absolutely. keep the eye and hand coordination going, you know, when you're getting older. I'm on three liters of oxygen, and even with that, wow. I get short-winded, you know, so... Wow. Um, but well, I'm here hang in there, buddy. Out. Now, here's from uh, one of the chatters. It says... After the Bluetooth headset's been successfully paired with the PS3, you must set it as default input audio device yep. in the exactly. settings accessory settings audio yep. device settings press exactly. the x button you've already done all that exactly you've done all that and i figured you had because the voice changer worked yeah so so a great mystery i hate i hate to hear my voice on the tv i'm gonna let you go anyway because i gotta go but poor, okay, leo, poor leo listen i love you man I, I can't, you can't believe what you have meant to me You're, because of you i built my first um and I've messed with computers since the, the Commodore 64 back in uh, 79. But um, I don't know anywhere near as much as you. I wish I knew a tenth of what you know. But uh, I do love messing around with them, but it's a love-hate relationship because they're always breaking down on you, you know? I know. It really is, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. It, it, it's, uh, it's something that I always will enjoy. And I, like I said, I, I saved over $2,000 when you when you guys were doing your ultimate gaming machine on yeah. the screen savers. Yeah. By what I learned watching your show, I built my own system and I saved over $2,000 on it. It would have cost me at least 2000 more to build my first gaming machine. And that was back in 89, which now it would be totally antique, you know. Oh, it is. When yeah. I look at that old uh, Ultimate Gaming Machine, it was so not Ultimate. <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe when I heard you say now it, um, it's like 1 to 15 years, oh, like the dog. Terrible. 1 to 7. I knew it was. I knew it was it's 1 to 15. Lot. So let's see. That was 98. So that was 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So that's a 300 year old machine. <laughs> 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 my, my wife has burned it out four or five different times, and I had to rebuild it. <laughs> oh, I bet. I hey, it's not. such a pleasure. Please stay in touch. Oh, I will. I, I can't believe I got through. I mean, I literally, for the 27 years, I've called, I can't believe how many times, but have never gotten through. <laughs> Kim, give Bob the special number. I want him to get through any time he wants. <laughs> Bob, it's a pleasure. I, You know... It's great to talk to you. What's your gamer tag? One uh, Viper Fifty Two. I'll look for Viper Fifty Two or Viper Fifty Two Twelve. It's so I use both. You want to get beat? Viper Fifty Two or Fifty Two Twelve? He's going to beat. He's going to hand you your Call of Duty. <laughs> you don't play the Far Cry online though, right? That's solo. Solo. Oh, no, no, I play it online. You play it online too? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't played it online. I've just played the solo. Oh, well, it's cool to play online. If you get somebody that is an adult enough to, to act right and not sit there right. in the head all the time. Yeah, I hate those. I hate yeah. those. Uh, you can't kill each other. No. But it's still a pain in the neck. I'll I hate those campers. I'll offer to go take a place. I'll say, okay, go stealth. And what does he do? He runs right straight in there and blasts uh, away and alerts. Uh, you know, oh, you're playing with Leroy Jenkins. That's who you're playing with. <laughs> Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> hey, Bob, what a pleasure. Oh, Thank man, you I wish so I didn't much. Have a direct night number to get through to you. <laughs> I I wish there were such a number, but there really isn't. But I know. But I, I I will. I hope talk to you again. I will tell Kim anytime you call to put you right on. 
Watch out for the email, at least. I will. I'll look for your email. I don't normally look at email, but I will look for yours. Yeah, if I ever send you an email, it'll be Viper5212. Beauty. I, I'm sorry, Viper52 at Gmail. Peace out, Viper52. <laughs> Pleasure talking to you. I love you to death, man. I love you too, man. I, I, give you, I hope you have a long career and, and your stuff. And, uh, you know, I, oh, one last thing. You know where, um, um, uh, what's the... Uh, uh, the little town over there but by Napa, above Napa, Yachtville. Yachtville. You know yeah, Yachtville is? sure. My mother was there, and I didn't know where you are now. I've been up there. She passed away in 2005. God bless her. But um, I had been up there three times while she was there. And oh. If I'd have known where you oh. were, I'd have come by. Oh, we're an hour yeah. away. Easy. I, yeah, I didn't know. Oh. I had no idea you were there. It kills me. Uh <laughs> well, come by and see your, your it would have been fun to have you. It would have been it would have been fun to have you. We're gonna f oh, we're gonna figure out some way to get this working. So maybe all next right. week, okay, Bob? I'm, all right, I take it easy. All right. you, you have a good life. You have a wonderful day. Shoot some snipers for me. I will. I okay, no will. more campers. <laughs> all right. All right. Take care, Bob. Okay, you see too. Ya. Bye bye. bye, -bye.